Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mavis Beacon Teaches Tactics. I am just getting things set up again here. I, I tested this ahead of time this time. In fact, I'm just going to hit load. No. Continue, because I don't remember which save is right. That's the best way to handle it. I'm going to make a phone call. Phone call? Not really a phone call. More of a Discord call. That's kind of what they're called, aren't they? Well, if Discord will allow me. Does not want to. Anyway, hello everybody and welcome back to Mavis Beacon Teaches Tactics. We are back again for the second week in a row. I'm going to try and uh, be more consistent about this one because I... <sighs> I had trouble with that before and I need to be better about it. I'm just so busy all the time, you know? It's tough. It's tough out there. I'm going to just get people worked into this call real quick too. How is everybody doing? I'm also pulling up the app because I don't have anybody else on the call with me yet because this thing is being it's slow. Uh, da -da. Check that. Uh huh. Loading, 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 loading. Why is it taking so long to load, I wonder? Wait, does it always do this? Is it all, the load always this? Whoop. Now, it's making, hmm, it's changing my cursor when I mouse over a certain part. Now I'm wondering what will happen if I click. Oh, there it goes. It is going. It is just being slow. There it is. Okay. Let me see about getting somebody on this call. Nikki couldn't join us right away because Nikki's uh, power went out in his place. So I'm going to see about getting somebody else on here. meantime god where were we again that's the big problem with this game is this game is so text heavy so story dense so story rich really mavis is a very you know Ma mavis contains multitudes hello blackjack attack nice to see you here test two piece mission items objectives okay <clears throat> south seattle docks Leaving the seamstress... I'm not going to read everything on this stream, uh, I promise that ahead of time, but I am going to go ahead and um, read this intro text to give us all a reminder of where we're at. Which is to say, we need to get to the NTSB warehouse, and I need to make sure that my cat behind me isn't attacking my other cat. Hey, Cunty, get off of him. Leave him alone, he's trying to sleep. He's trying to sleep. <sighs> Leaving the seamstress's union behind, you heard you head to the docks. The Ripper killed Sam, and maybe he or she slipped up with this latest victim. Let some left some useful evidence. Only one way to find out. Cuddy, get away from him. South Seattle's your typical industrial area. Wow, what are you trying to say about Seattle? Grit, grime, and gray. The rain doesn't help matters any. Layers of dirt mixed with abandoned wooden pallets, repurposed into makeshift furniture for the day workers. Garbage collects in the gutters of the broken down street. Disreputable is the district's middle name. Your destination, the National Transportation Safety Board Warehouse, is located on a small strip of dock towards the less maintained end of the waterfront. Despite the presence of those who linger in such places, it's quiet as you approach the gate. So I guess we didn't really do anything with that, like, Universal Church of Brotherhood guys or whatever last week, huh? Alright. Uh, Gonchorn says, giving cats commands never works, that's true. So I'm gonna you know, slip up behind myself really quick here to pull this other cat away from this other cat. Let's just hit start voice call on this thing here real quick, or maybe. I just realized that, uh... I'm gonna check this Discord here.
Hopefully. LB is making, uh, beans at the moment. Jordan has to miss tonight, says Jordan. Nikki's power is out. Um, just trying to get LB on the call here for us, but, uh, LB is making beans. So while LB makes beans and, uh, in response to my friend request to get in here, I am going to talk to this lady, uh, whose name appears to be Streetwalker. Maybe I can't talk to her. Oh, there we go. Hey, you looking for a good time? I don't know anything about NTSB. Okay, what now? Okay, no, I have a... I have a... Gas mask. I'm in South Seattle. I'm looking for the NTSB. Hmm. I'm trying to remember all the controls now, too. Is there nothing that allows me to look up all the items nearby? Let's take a look here. I remember... Mission items... Yeah, okay. NTSB... We were getting into guns, I remember that being a big thing last time. Because uh, somebody in the chat mentioned that this game really wants you to have guns and be good at guns, not so much the other stuff, which was a which was a problem, I think, in some of our combat that we ran into the other week. Hopefully we'll still be good at the typing, because this is Mavis Beacon Teaches Tactics. Halt! Oh boy, look at this! That guy's a robot! Uh, yeah, Atomic Gold, this is Shadowrun Returns, the first and most people will say worst of the Shadowrun Returns Games by Hairbrain Schemes, one of my favorite developers out there because they made a little game called Battletech in 2018 that I adore and have been playing a lot of lately. Uh, they made three of these games, and this is apparent. This is the first one, and I wanted to start with the first one, even though everybody says that the uh, other ones are better. Dragonfall and Hong Kong are supposed to be better. The guard looks bored. He toys with his gun. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Looking for my kitty cat. Here, kitty. Oh, that didn't work, apparently. Okay. I thought maybe since I was dealing with cats in real life, it would be a, a real problem here. Oh, wait, did that really just lock me out of, like, any con stuff with that guy? I figured I'd be able to talk to him again and maybe talk my way through a different way. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's take a look here. Let's walk around a bit. Uh, uh-huh. Big gate. Uh-huh. Street. Walking around. Oh, wait. And go up here. Hey, that's mine. Oh, is this the same homeless man? Uh, who raised you? Pack of wolves? I could use your intestines. No, we're not gonna do that. Five bucks is nothing. Hell yeah. Mavis Beacon is a friend to the unhoused people. Um, this is, the, this is, I have decided as part of the lore of this world. Oh, okay. And now we are going to, speaking of the lore of this world, we're going to add to it a little bit here, real quick. I'm sure. By starting a voice call. I'm going to move my microphone a little bit, too. Hi, Elby. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just uh, put some beans in a crock pot and then ran over. It was like, shit, I'm late. No, no Attacked. worries. Uh, how are the beans? They're beautiful. I'm so excited for them to cook and become edible beans instead of just like dry little hard things. Oh, those dry little guys? Those dry guys. Yeah, they're beautiful, though. Oh, that's good. I like a good shapely bean. Yeah, these are really pretty. They're black and white. Ooh. Like they kind of look like cows. Oh, they've got, like, spots? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I honestly... I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know the difference between beans. Like, if I, if you put a bean in front of me, I guess I would know a red bean if you put a red bean in front of me, because I'd be like, oh, that bean is red. I mean, that's what a lot of bean... Uh, that's kind of how it starts with beans, right? Is you go by color. Like, well, that's a black bean. Oh, okay. It's a red bean. It's a brown bean. It's a white bean. Like, that's, that's kind of like the... I, I'm just making this up. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is true. Oh, okay. It feels true. <laughs> like, when I'm in the bean community, I feel like I see a lot of people talking about the colors of beans, so... Sure. But it's like, I mean, with anything, you can get really, really into stuff. Mmm. 
And like, it gets complicated. There is straight up a bean community. Is there bean Twitter? Oh, is there bean Twitter? That's a good question. I feel like crop Twitter. Yeah, is this discourse is very color based versus species based. Automatic gold says so uh. that's like. Yeah, because I think there's like some beans are relatives of each other, and so like like the texture and taste is going to be similar in ways that. Okay. I'm just a. I am you know I'm a novice in the world of beans. Oh, you might say that you're a beanie baby. <laughs> that's really good. I love that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I thought I did okay. Uh. <laughs> so, what is this game? Tell me about Shadowrun Tactics. Shadowrun Returns. Shadowrun Returns is a tactics game. It's like a tactics RPG. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever played a tactics game before, LB? How, what are some of... Name some. Um, Fire Emblem is a tactics game? Yeah, I played Fire Emblem. Okay, great. Then you've played tactics, tactics games. Ah, I can't speak. It's a hard word to say yeah. really fast. Tactics. tactics games. Yeah, there's a lot of things and consonants. Challenging mm -hmm. consonants. Challenging Again, consonants. Another thing I would know how to, like, I'd be really able to articulate if I knew about, like, sounds. <laughs> but I don't know those words. You know, it's like so many areas of expertise people can have. And right. I don't have those. So, yeah. So, it's like Fire Emblem. And yeah. You, so, you, you're, you're a little guy running around. Mm hmm uh, this is Mavis Beacon. Um, he, okay. He is my, um, I think he, I'm a troll. So the thing about Shadowrun, Shadowrun is a tabletop RPG. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it at all. No, I'm not. Uh, it was like an 80s tabletop RPG where it's like, I'm sure there's some snazzy tagline that goes with it, but I don't know what it is. It's familiar. That's a... Ho, 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 Ren, very good. More like Shadow Fun. Oh, obviously. more like Shadow Fun. There you go. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I interrupted you with that good brand. No, no, no. Sorry. That's a good. That's a good point. Uh, Shadow Fun is more like Shadow Fun is the uh, famous tagline for Shadow Run, which is a tabletop RPG about like it's a cyberpunk future, but then one day everybody wakes up and like some of them are elves and some of them are dwarves and they can do magic suddenly. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a cool. The concept. best of both worlds. Uh huh. Um, and um, I am a troll. I think. I forget if I'm a troll or at orc. The I, big uh, arms, either way. Big arms. I'm the biggest one. I, so I guess probably cool. a troll. Probably not an orc. Nice. Um, and um, <laughs> Nikki um, decided that I should be called Mavis Beacon because I am a hacker. I, I'm like good at hacking, so I'm good at typing. Of course. Because I was wondering about this. I was like, is this like, was this a sequel to the typing game? Uh huh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 Mavis Beacon, uh, you know, it takes place in the original Mavis Beacon takes place in 1985. You'd go forward like 200 years, you get to Shadowrun, and everybody's gotten so good at typing, they're hacking in ed to everything left and right. <laughs> That's you never know, like what effect you're gonna have. Right, if you people how to type, then everyone's a hacker. That's <laughs> like that's how it works. That's how it happens. So cool. Yeah. That's so who's this guy? Uh, this is Officer Agu Aguirre? Aguirre? Um, Aguirre. It's some kind of cop. Uh, I don't think there's, like, really cops in this universe. I think it's all, like, private military people, like the Expanse. So right away, I'm noticing about this guy. His hat's too small. Yeah, very small hat for his head. Also, seems like it's maybe on sideways? Is it on sideways? You know, it's, again, hats... Are such an area of like true passion for hat people yeah that maybe he was just so intimidated when he like went on to hat youtube and was like i can't there's no way i can figure this out <laughs> i can't hack into hat youtube no that's true and so yeah. he just went with a hat that was too small for his head uh this guy does not wear any kind of hat he has like these cool goggles i've met this guy before He's cool. Yeah, this is Dresden. He's got a good energy. Yeah, he does. Dresden. He looks trustworthy. Also, he's like probably the nicest guy I've met in this game so far. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Uh, he's like a mortician. Is that the kind of guys who run a morgue? Morticians? Uh, coroner. Uh, sure. Coroner. Yeah, there we go. There we go. He's a coroner because um, I am investigating a series of murders. Basically, the premise of this game, um, this will be good for the people who haven't kept up with the series either or missed the first episode or something. But my person, Mavis Beacon, um, was friends with a guy who was like a career criminal. And then we went our separate ways. 
you know, five years later, I get a message from him saying, like, hey, I'm dead, and this is my last will and testament. Shit. You get all of my stuff, you get all my money, but you have to find out who killed me. Um, oh, that's, that's so... Okay, so this is, like, these are there's stakes here. There are, yeah. I'm let's trying solve to... this. Let's, okay, let's solve it. I'm, I'm here, I'm down. Thank you for catching me up, Steven. Yeah. Let's solve this mystery. Okay, who do you think did it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, like, let's play the game. Oh, okay. <laughs> like you and me. Right oh, now. fuck. Okay. I thought this was kind of a uh, clue thing. You could decide to try and solve the case anytime. Well, I need the little cards. Um, well, so it seems like he was killed by somebody called the Ripper, who is a uh, killer who is killing people and then stealing different organs from them. So he killed, like, one That's person. Okay. No. Um, he killed one person and took their liver, he took one, killed one person and took their eyes, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and Dresden has been helping me kind of find, uh, find who this Ripper might be. Well, I mean, with a case, like, a murder case like that, it is good to have the coroner on your side. That is true, yeah. Yeah. And there's, like, one cop, I think that's the, co over there, the, the one guy is the cop who likes me, um, and then there's one who does not like me. Um, complicated and th okay, this cool. cop likes me because that other cop doesn't like me and he hates that cop so he's like all right i'll help you because it pisses that guy off the enemy of my enemy is my friend gotcha exactly. gotcha gotcha the enemy of mavis is my keyboard think about it <laughs> uh i'm gonna keep it straightforward with this guy i'm just gonna ask what's up with this uh corpse we're investigating there's another corpse and we're kind of just like following the trail of corpses trying to get to the ripper i think it's basically the idea so this victim is male mixed to native american descent age 38 based on condition of the body looks like he was killed around two in the morning cause of death Thank you, Dresden. yeah Dresden's good at his job look at that guy he look at his smile you know that he yeah. takes satisfaction in his work but he's also worried. There's like, it's a little bit of a grimace mm. smile. Like, ah, oh, I wish these guys would stop getting murdered like this. <laughs> In a perfect Sucks. world, men like me wouldn't need to exist. <laughs> right. Uh, oh. I knew what they were doing before I started cutting. Oh, um, so that was the other thing, too, is it seemed like the murderer has like a basic working knowledge of anatomy. So they might be some kind of doctor. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so this is like, I've. I've seen some mysteries like this before. Yeah. This is a thing that happens sometimes. I don't remember how any of them turned out, so I can't actually help right. with the mystery solving, but... <laughs> well, I also <laughs> bet most of the murder mysteries that you've seen kind of like this didn't have elves and orcs, and it didn't turn out that the end is like, oh, actually it was a dragon the whole time. <laughs> Wait, it was a dragon the whole time? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, that's oh. a possibility for all I know it could be. Fuck. But surgeon I drag. Dragon surgeon. Ooh. Goes nuts. I mean, that's the plot of Dragon Heart, right? I don't think that's that's true. Mm, okay, well, we'll have to watch that movie again and find yeah. out for certain. I mean, it's been a while, so. <laughs> uh, is McCluskey getting any closer to a suspect? Who's that woman over there? No clue. Next of kin, maybe. Uh, I'd love to solve before McCluskey. I think McCluskey is the one who doesn't like me. I don't think I've got that backwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Just find right, see. <laughs> yeah, as you grow up, as pointed out, as McClunky, and I also thought McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing too. Is this is all tied into Star Wars? Disney owns this franchise now, obviously. So they own everything else. They must own this. Uh, da, da, da. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is McCluskey getting any closer to a suspect? Okay, well, it sounds like McCluskey is kind of the um, precinct joke. I don't think anybody particularly thinks McCluskey's got this one on lock. So this guy's missing his lungs, and yeah, my Mavis Beacon just pointed out, like, oh, it seems like it's a different organ every time. So this was my theory last week, or last episode, I forget when we last did this, but I think that there's going to be some kind of Frankenstein thing going on. Or like somebody got like or like a like a uh, uh, John Carpenter's body bags type thing. Yeah, it seems like they might be just trying to build a new person. That makes sense. Yeah, 
and they need all these organs or or like maybe the the organs or it could be that and a mix of some other guy got killed or whatever and then his organs were given out to like you know donated to various people and now somebody's trying to get all the pieces of that guy back or maybe his own pieces i don't even know Blaine Gravy uh, asks, us, maybe it's a fun art project. Oh, it could be a fun art project. Yeah, kind of like a Thanks, Hannibal. Addy, thing. that's a that's a very. Yeah. <laughs> or you know what? Do you ever see that episode of Invader Zim? Yeah. Where, uh, yeah, where he's gonna have the where he has to go to the school nurse and he's really worried that he doesn't have any organs, so uh-huh. he just gets as many as he can. Maybe it's Invader Zim. One of the one of I would say not the most fucked up, but one of the most fucked up episodes of Invader Zim for sure, for sure, for sure, right? <laughs> What a healthy human boy, exactly. <laughs> and so many organs. <laughs> uh, oh, that episode is put, wild. They should put Invader Zim in this game. Oh yeah. Okay. Does this now? Does Disney own Invader Zim? I think Nickelodeon still owns Invader Zim. Probably. And and Disney does not own Nickelodeon. No, they're enemy. They're mortal enemies. Oh, okay. Good. 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 There should be mortal enemies to Disney. For sure. I like a lot of Disney products, but at the same time, I think it's fucked up how much stuff Disney owns. They shouldn't own everything. No, 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 no. Oh, that's a good point. Invader Zim and Kingdom Hearts. Okay. That's very okay. tempting. Okay. Okay. Can okay, Zim well, hold the lightsaber? I if... <sighs> one day will experience Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Outside of, I mean, I've only seen, I've seen like clips of it, and it just seems, and people have told me about it, and then I've kind of zoned out while they've talked about it because. It, my brain can't contain the things that people tell me about Kingdom Hearts. I think that's normal. I think most people yeah. who... I would say even most people who play Kingdom Hearts can't keep all of what's going on in Kingdom Hearts in their brain. Um, but it seems like a very weird, cursed experience that I, I want to know about. Yeah. I played... I was exactly the right age for Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 when those came out. Um, so I did play those, and I so I have a basic understanding of Kingdom Hearts lore, but then the problem ended up being that I uh, did not have, like, the thing that they ended up doing with Kingdom Hearts was they split up those games across, like, a ton of different um, consoles, and all of the games were vital to the lore. Um, so it was like, well, I don't own a Nintendo 3DS or whatever, so I can't play this, or I can't play this so on con- whatever. That's infuriating. I hated it, and that's what I fell off when I was a kid, because I didn't own the right Game Boy or whatever, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> now, at this point, like, all those games are out in, like, HD collections, and you can just, you know, pay 30 bucks and get every single game on PS4 or whatever. Sorry, there's a fly in my office. My new mortal enemy is oh. this fly. I'm sorry. It's okay. Did you get rid of the crickets? I think so. I hope so. I don't want to jinx it. Oh, okay. Yeah, if... uh, For those of ever... For those of you not caught up on the cricket experience that I had. (laughs) The cricket lore. I had a cricket who I thought was my friend. And I guess... I think that cricket died. I think the cricket who was my friend Mm. passed away. Sure. Um, And then a new cricket came. And just like really didn't respect my boundaries mm. um, and woke me up and was in my bedroom. And I did have to commit a murder and then set some traps. Yeah. Um, and uh, I haven't found any more. Okay, that's good. But I also haven't checked all the traps because I had to like put some of them in like really, you know, hard to reach places. Oh, the traps? Yeah, the traps like behind things that i can't reach so okay so you have but i haven't heard them. any crickets okay it's been no more chirping so i do remember it being said that um the female crickets don't make noises is that the, for the right. problem okay yeah that is that is, was a major concern of mine but at a certain point the crickets will just pass away right as long as they're and not you breeding. do need you know yeah and you, you do need a chirping cricket to make new crickets. Okay. Well, then that's probably not a problem. But did you know, this was when I was pro cricket, that mm-hmm. uh, some crickets, some male crickets will just have sex with each other. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's like one of the uh, the few species, especially with insects, where they've like noted uh, same sex mating behaviors. So I was going to say, I, I knew that was a thing in a lot of different mammal species, but I'd never heard about that yeah, with bugs. Yeah, not insects. Huh. So pretty cool. John, that's a good point. Crickets do just get nasty. <laughs> just to anybody. Wherever they are. <laughs> Noted. Uh, 
entomologists. <laughs> <John Warren. laughs> Crickets are just dirty birds. I would say birds are dirty birds. Yeah, d- birds are like, I was always told when I was younger not to get near or touch birds because it was always like implied that they maybe had diseases. Yeah, I thought that I was going to get rabies from birds. Oh, really? Can birds give you rabies? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I believed this as like a 10 year old. Is this Mavis Beacon's bedroom that he had? Wait, that doesn't make any sense to have a bedroom at the police station. No, this is a like a dock. This is like a okay. like a transport authority where the murder happened. And uh, this is a crime scene. Um, I'm trying okay. to find. So shamans. Are th- <laughs> I thought this was a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's toothbrush was over by that like locker. So, you know, like it's somebody <clears throat> was spending time here. Um, the, the, in the Shadowrun universe, um, shamans and like shamanism is definitely a thing. Um, and the guy who was killed is Native American. His sister is here, and she is going to do um, some like uh, talking to the dead type stuff with magic um, to talk to her brother to find out what killed him. And I need to find two haunted objects that belong to her brother for her to be able to talk to his spirit. Okay. Uh, Let's find those haunted objects then. Yeah, I think I got a haunted comb. Okay. okay. Uh, and now I'm reading some notes on a computer. Is the computer haunted? Oh, that's a good question. Okay. That would be very helpful. It's oh, it's, it's so, solving the mystery. It's saying here that okay, there was a crash of an Aries jetliner near the UCAS and Sioux Nation border. So I believe the Sioux Nation is like its own country in the United States in the Shadowrun universe. Um, cool. Like the the United States has like split up into like seven different. Um, like countries in that same like landmass. Nice. I remember talking about that on a previous episode because like the remnants of the U.S. government and like Canadian government are like they 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 chill. They they're cool together. They're like one country, but they're small. They don't own the entire North American continent. Seems good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's some kind of experimental research initiative. Oh, okay, so I, don't, I think that was unrelated. I think that's like a side quest that I just got. John is uh, confessing to watching the birds in his backyard with binoculars. Oh, bur- is that birding? And also to being 78 years old. Is that birding, John? John, are he's you a birder? Answering. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's he says, yeah, that's birding. That's wow. birding. Wait, I actually maybe encouraged this behavior. Yeah. I maybe told him that he, it was <gasps> a good thing for him to do. Wait, did you ever get that? John, did you ever get did you into Bonsai? Ooh. He's <laughs> yelling at me now. I he did get Bonsai. Did. How come you ever showed me? Uh, my thing is, like, I can't keep a plant alive because I'm very irresponsible and cruel. Oh. Um, so my thing is to get other people to live my dreams of getting Bonsai trees. John is a tree guy and a bird guy, I think. And a drone guy. Oh, a drone guy, yeah. Well, drones are just, like, small, loud, plastic birds. That's true. That's what I thought, so. Uh, I just wanted to point out here, I'm sorry I haven't, I'm not clicking through this stuff. I'm looking through this, like, black bo- box of a uh, crashed plane. Why don't they just make the whole plane out of the cra- uh, black box, you know? Um, and they talk about crashing into an empty field in western North Dakota, which... Might be the first time I've heard the um, my home state, North Dakota, mentioned in a video game since. Where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> oh, congratulations! Thank you. I'm so proud. I was just having a conversation about where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego the other day. I've never. I don't think I played anything in the Carmen San Diego gaming franchise. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we're in I North- watched the television program. But oh, that's it. the the game show or the new one? The game show okay. as a child. Um, where in uh, North Dakota is Carmen San Diego? Is like a super super rare game. Oh, it's like one of the most rare commercially available games in like history or something like that. Um, because it's basically a fan game that was made by two or three or something like that. Um, teachers in North Dakota. Um, and then it was like sold. It was like, hey, this is this is cool. And then like they, the Carmen San Diego people were like, what if we made a bunch of state themed Carmen San Diego games after that? You're so warming about that. I love that. Yeah. 
It's apparently like super, super crazy hard too for most people because it's like full of North Dakota trivia that like, why would you know anything about North Dakota I, if you don't live oh, here? Oh, that's great. I love that. That's, I think there should be more like regionally hyper-specific video games. Yeah. Why not? I think video games should be less relatable. Yeah. I think yeah. um, we, and especially we like, in that direction. Yeah. Especially like trivia games like Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Super niche just unplayable i'm serious i think that's like there's something very cool about that yeah. okay so now you're at the you're at the plane crash site yeah or i mean some hangar where they took the pieces of the crash plane. oh sorry not the site but the plane crash storage facility where you store the where you crash. store cra- crash planes obviously <laughs> uh was that a sneak a child sneaker you found yeah it looked like maybe that's one of the haunted objects uh, ew. I'm getting my hands all covered in garbage. Gross. There's an earring. Uh, this must be one of the items the shaman was looking for. There you go. Okay. There's a lunchbox. Seems like it doesn't do anything. I, I mean, I guess you should probably look at it if you're solving a mystery. But usually, if I'm if I'm seeing an old battered clothes lunchbox, I'm throwing that thing away. Yeah. I'm not looking inside. No, true. I don't know anyone who's ever owned a lunchbox. Ever? I don't think so. Maybe in elementary school. I'm I trying feel to like think. I had to. Have, I had a hmm. actual lunchbox. Yeah, like a lunchbox. I mean, it could be plastic. Doesn't have to be like the metal kind or anything. Really? No. I feel like I had to have seen somebody with one some point but I don't, all my memories are of like tv shows <laughs> so nikki solved this problem for us he just said i had a lunchbox until we stopped going into the office el mayo <laughs> so i guess we both know somebody who owns a lunchbox <laughs> okay uh problem solved now hey you know what that's the first mystery of the night that we've solved nice us that's like Oh, at half an hour into the stream, and yeah. then we've already solved one mystery. Exactly. If we can solve Look that in half an hour, this should be nothing. Solve so many murders tonight. Oh. McCluskey's here. He doesn't like me. This is the bad Ew, cop. that's McCluskey? That's McCluskey. He's an orc, I think. Oh, okay. That's why he's got the weird mouth. Yeah, orcs got weird mouths. Uh, I don't know what Salish is. I hope that's not a bad thing. Not some Salish drum circle, it says? That's an elf word. Oh, is it? That sounds right. Hello, Mathari. Good, good evening. Nope, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a real group of people. I'm sorry. Oh, is it really? Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, it's an English because it's an Anglicization of uh, a word that doesn't look like an elf word. It looks oh. like a, a word that makes sense. Uh, but it's a uh, there. It's a group of tribes in the, the Flathead Reservation in. At the Pacific Northwest in Uh British Columbia. So this guy's being racist is what he's doing. Yeah. Kind of seems like it. I mean, but look at his haircut. Yeah, no, that is a racist haircut. Like, for sure. Like, that is a guy who, like, isn't in the military because he, like, I don't know, had bad eyesight or something like that. They wouldn't let him in. But he, like, super, super cosplays as, like like, a soldier sometimes. He definitely owns, like, a tactical vest. Okay. And you're right, I was thinking, it, I was getting confused with Dalish, which sucks. That's Dalish, that's a Dragon Age thing, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. Well, the snowman is correcting me. Because, yeah, I spent a lot of time in, in the PNW. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I, uh, my parents live up there. Oh. They retired up there. My, uh, and we, I would visit a lot as a kid because of family stuff. That's cool. It's nice up there. Yeah, it's beautiful. A lot of trees. Uh. Whales. Oh, you get to see Whales? Yeah, whales. I mean, I, I can see, I've seen whales down here, too. I was about to say, maybe that's not, like, abnormal where you live. I'm, you know, I'm landlocked, so... I mean, it's... it's, it's you, you're not... 
I don't look out the window <laughs> and like see a whale. You have to like go. No, you have like, to ride one to work every day. Time. <laughs> you, you know, you have to like find the special whale time and like get on a boat and then you can see the whales. But okay, it's not like in the in the Pacific Northwest though. You can just look out the window and see just a shitload of trees. Oh, that wow. is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I nice. that I believe. I well, I've got my I've got my shitty little palm tree here out, out my window. I, I'm not doing too bad. That's not bad. I, I would take a palm tree over no trees. How are you doing in the tree department? Um, most of the trees in North Dakota are like because this was prairie, um, so they're like transplanted here, you know, 200 years got ago it. or whatever. Um, actually, in, I mean, oh sorry, palm trees are palm trees are not native to Southern California. That's either. right. I forgot about that. Um, so there are a lot of trees up here, but there, it's actually like they, there's a thing like, um, I grew up on various farms cause both of my grandparents, both my sets of grandparents, um, lived on farms and, um, there's these things called shelter belts. Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. Nope. Um, basically they would just like plant sort of miniature long thin forests next to fields. And that would block the wind so that the wind wouldn't blow away your, like, uh, it wouldn't erode your, like, um, crops and, like, your your, your plowed oh. areas and blow away your seeds and stuff. Um, so there's, like, all these, like, uh, besides just, like, trees that you get in cities because people plant trees in front of their houses or whatever, out in the, like, rural areas, there's all these, like, weird sort of, like, mini forests called shelter belts all over the place. That's so cool. It is neat. I used to hang out in shelter belts all the time. Used to build tree forts in them a lot. Oh yeah, you mentioned the tree forts in your uh, your new weekly column this week, didn't you? I did my new weekly column, the morning stack on fanbite.com every Thursday that everybody can go read this right now, <laughs> or you can wait till after the stream too, I guess. After the stream, you're like, oh, I miss Steven. I want more Steven. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can go read the new column. Thank you for oh. reminding me, LB. No problem. No, I miss. Uh, I, I enjoyed your column. Thank you. I, I read it. Now, uh, doing the socials for a lot of the articles, I'm now reading the site a lot more. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good website. Yeah, it's kind of funny sometimes when you realize, like, you haven't been paying attention to things that we do on the website, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, god damn, we actually put up some really good stuff, huh? <laughs> like, I've been this listening... Like, when, yeah, well, just getting added on, like, some of the emails, and just, like, seeing, like... Wow, everyone I work with is so competent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they respond in such a timely way, I gotta get off that. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, wait, what were you starting to say? I was going to say, I've been listening, I've been catching up on um, West Coast Friends Reunion, a podcast that you are on. Um, I am. And enjoying that a lot, because it's like still consistently maybe one of the funniest fucking things we do on this website. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just when it's dipshit hour. I love that. <laughs> the best is when we were, we were recording, you love to see it, and then Friends Reunion in the same day, because I'd have to like try to be really smart for you love to see it. Oh. And then I would just get really dumb <laughs> for Friends Reunion. Uh, that's fine. You empty out your brain on the earlier yeah. thing then, at least. So it's good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm now I'm looking up like diagrams of how shelter belts work. This is oh, yeah. very interesting to me. And apparently, uh, they use the they they have this in uh, wineries in California. Oh, well. that makes sense. Eucalyptus trees. You'd probably want it by like most things where you're growing stuff, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. Coyote's crusade. Coyote is the so this lady with the cool scar on her face. She, I want to say, was the girlfriend of the guy that I or or she knew the guy that I, I'm, whose murder I'm trying to solve um, and I found her and uh, being like tort because she had like gone on some like shadow run like she had gone on some kind of like cyberpunk mission um, to try and take down this shitty landlord um, oh yeah yeah exactly fuck him up uh, so this is the thing like I have not uh, beaten it I did play a bunch of the second game in this trilogy um, this is the first game of the trilogy. Um, I played a bunch of the second game. The second game has a lot of really cool things to say about politics and stuff. Like, it takes place in Germany, and it's, like, this part of Germany that has is this, like, economic experiment where they just, like, tried, like, anarcho-syndicalism um, and to, uh, like in the cyberpunk universe and tried to see how that worked. Um, so it's like a like like actual political anarchy, like the, the, the real thing, not the thing what people say oh, wow. when they mean anarchy. Um, and it's set there. It's really cool. That sounds really cool. 
Uh, and then she that. needs help with something. Uh, so, oh, right. So the, the dead man, Sam, is the name of the guy whose killer I'm trying to find. He had a sister. And I think we're trying to find the sister to see if she knows anything about um, his final days. And then it sounds like they put it in a call, so she's maybe going to show up. Okay, cool. And she has a cool robot arm now, because she she got captured by the landlord. I saved her from the landlord. Um, and, but Thank she, you. Yeah. Uh, and then she got a cool scar and a cool robot arm. I wish everybody could get, like, a cool robot arm after a bad experience with a landlord. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We deserve it. I know. Everyone deserves it. I actually no longer have a landlord, but... You know oh yeah, mean? yeah. Oh, sorry. I did look up Dragonfall. This looks extremely cool. Oh, it's super, super neat. From what I, what little I played of it, like, the anarchic yeah. free state of Berlin. I'm uh -huh. like, start crying. I'm like, uh. yeah. I may check this out. Oh, I can even play it on my Macintosh computer. Oh yeah, these games are like all almost entirely 2D art. They like run on anything. Oh, that's great. Who's this guy? Uh, this is BTL Clocker, I guess. The orc looks twitchy. I love the faces in this game, too. I don't know if this is true, but we keep saying it, which is that these all look like they're the faces, like, painted faces of Kickstarter backers. Because <laughs> they just look like normal people that they then, like, uh, photoshopped teeth onto. <laughs> uh, okay, so this guy's A Clocker, I guess that's a title. Trades work time for chips. Part salesman, part lookout probably has a signal device for the guys inside. Uh, I think chips are like, it's like cyber drugs. I think it's like you plug in to like a you chip uh, and you get to see cool stuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, but he's selling snuff films, basically. That's not cool. No, and Coyote did not seem happy about it. Yeah, that seems like one of the worst things you could sell. Yeah, really. absolutely. if you're selling films, damn. So we're having a real a humorous landlord chat. Oh, uh, in, the chat in the chat? Right okay, no worries, no worries. Gives me time to focus on the story here to kind of catch up on what's going on. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry for being distracting. No, no, not at all. I love doing this. <sighs> BTL Clocker with his lopsided grin. What a creep. Yeah, I don't like him. Can we beat him up? Uh, can we beat him up? I'm just I'm just watching. But no, no, can no, no. no. Beat him up? This is, uh, I view this as like, we're all in this together. The people in chat are in this together. You're in this with me. All in this together. We, we make the decisions together. Yeah. We, we win and lose together. Great. Can we beat him up? I'm going to try. I'm going to see. Okay, so uh, he's a, that's the best part. Best part. It's a lab. They test new stuff here. Buy a pass from the guy at the door. I'll get you in anytime you want. Then you can buy a beetle and slot right there. Can I just punch him to get inside? Like, what would Bronald do? You know? I was doing oh! some, I was tracking some Bronald footage earlier. So oh, yeah. Inspired to punch and kick. Mostly kick. Well, I punched him. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> he just went down in one hit. <laughs> Fucking Guy Gardner. Bye! <laughs> I'm just walking in uh, now, I guess. I should save. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think they're going to be happy that I'm in here now. This woman looks concerned. Uh, oh, no. Okay, she's, she's fine with me. She's, like, actually trying to warn me. Uh, there says there's oh they're run by the yakuza I guess. He sells passes. He's not he's not tough. Blind in one eye. There's another five or so wandering around. Two of them are bad news. Covered in magic symbols. Hmm. Sound like enough from experience. Oh, I'm gonna help this lady. That's the one thing that the they, they do in this place. Like that was one of the things I stopped in that last place where I got Coyote was um, they were they had a kid like like uh, like a 
18, 20 or something like that. Not like a literal minor, I don't think. But like, they had a young guy locked up in a room and they were torturing him to record his experiences so they could sell the, like, the chip of that experience to people. Uh, and I think that's happening here, too, or it happened to this lady's daughter. Complicated. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Oh. So, okay, so they are saying that since these people are here plugged into the chips, if um, I try to attack, they can turn the chip to people against me. That's interesting. I wonder if I can non-lethally take those people out? Can I, can I beat them up? Because they can program them through their chips to, to turn them against me and make them attack. Hmm. Mavis, this is a sneaking mission, says Blackjack Attack. I don't think Mavis is good at um, sneaking, but we'll find out. Okay, can I try that again? No? I literally just can't talk to Jamal. You don't want money, my guy? Okay, well. Whoa. What happened there? Huh? What am I? Whoa. That's like changing the resolution of the game, I guess, all of a sudden. Okay, weird. Uh, whoa, why is it so big? Ah! I was trying to quick load, <laughs> and I did something. Uh, okay, I, I guess that changes resolution for some reason. For some reason, they have a dedicated change of the resolution around a button. Oh god, Nikki, I think I'm getting hacked. Uh... I was just trying to load my quick save to just pay $75 to that guy. <laughs> I have also never seen High School Musical, Nikki. Sorry to say. Didn't never seen Glee, never seen High School Musical. Oh no, what the fuck? Jamal! What the fuck? All I said was give me your card. He couldn't have been like... I assumed he would be like, well, give me money. Not like, well, fucking die then. What the shit? Okay, well... I got a shotgun now, so... Check it out. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. To whoever uh, last episode uh, said you should use guns instead of um, just trying to hit people a lot, I will say, guns appear to work pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah, blackjack attack, that's why I said go for guns. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> that worked out in my favor. Oh my god, okay. Just fucking... Wow. Wow. Missed? Fuck you. I can't believe that this went this well. Okay, well. Did I miss tactics? Yeah, I think tactics kind of happened to me. Damn. I talked oh, to. Oh shit. Yeah. I talked to a guy and he was just like, "All right, check this out," and shot me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check this out. It was actually a very cool thing to say before you shoot someone. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm getting shot at now, but um, then I shot with my shotgun. So. Previously, I was trying to use not guns on that run. I was trying to do um, uh, melee weapons like a baseball bat. Uh, mm. And then somebody in the chat the other uh, the other day said, like, hey, this game actually really wants you to use guns. You should use guns. And so I did that, and it turns out guns are really fucking good. Yeah. I mean, they did invent them in real life, I mean, because they're very convenient. Yeah, I suppose so. They do help with the specific- Oh, I think I died. Oh no. Uh, everything just went- Okay, mission red. But- Why is everyone talking about Glee in the chat? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> uh, oh, 
Wolf? God, yeah. Uh, Nikki uh, was talking about Glee and Nikki. Uh, no, don't musical. go watch Glee. Nikki, what's Nikki's? What's your deal this week? Trying to get people to watch bad shows. I don't know. First oh, it's me in the yeah. office. Now it's everyone in the chat and Glee. It was the office. That's right. No, well, I didn't see Steven bringing it up, so I'm blaming you, Nikki. Well, somebody else brought it up. It brought up High School Musical in chat, and then I said, I've never seen High School Musical or Glee. I've never seen any of that stuff. And then <laughs> Nikki was like, everybody should watch Glee. And I was like, all right. I actually did watch a bunch of Glee once uh, as a form of self-harm. Oh! Uh, it's one of the few shows you can really say that about. Really? Uh, which yeah, is yeah. Which pretty impressive. No, I believe that. Uh, I've not yeah. seen it, but I believe it. If you're, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, I watched several seasons of it just in a miserable fit of, mm. like, a month. It was awful. Why? Because I was really unhappy. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes you just need to do that for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I've, w I've definitely watched shows I really did not enjoy, but continued to watch them because I was depressed at the time. I don't know if I was doing yeah. it. Yeah. Be doing it because I was depressed, but I was definitely watching it, and I was depressed and watching it. Yeah. I think it was, like, a slippery slope, where mm. I started with, like, feeling like something that was, like, so bad it's good, where it was, like, a True Blood thing, and then I was like, oh. fuck it, you know, at this point, like, when I just watch something I really, I actually hate. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I stopped, I was like, I can't do this to myself anymore. No, god. I think we there there got to be a se there got to a season where there was like an overarching like really fat phobic storyline where I'm like oh I can't deal with this. that's awesome I can't deal with this no and you shouldn't have to and that's the beauty of um having so much there's media so many good things. there's so many good things exactly. that you can watch like the stream of this game that is very cool I would much rather watch myself play this than watch Glee <laughs> yeah <I'll say. laughs> uh well fuck well I'm sure it'll be fine. I didn't mean to accidentally run behind that guy. I meant to shoot him in the face. Uh, so I wasted a turn, but it's probably fine. So tactic, tactics games are ones with, like, turns, like Fire Emblem. Yeah, usually. Um, turns okay. and, like, moving people around and a certain number of actions per turn, usually. Um, so... A lot like this. Usually, uh... Usually, people describe uh, people have described Fire Emblem to me as just like sexy anime chess and never as a tactics game oh um, but I think that just had that's you know I uh, video games and stuff the more you can say tactics game unless you can say sexy anime chess that's true yeah hi hello hi. um one time, my first oppressive episode, I watched all of Scrubs in, uh, like, I think, like, 56 hours or mm. something, like, Damn. like, three days. Like, there was one day I didn't sleep, and I watched Scrubs not lying for 24 hours. Wow. That's an astonishing amount of Scrubs. That's, yeah, that's, an, that's almost an entire season of Scrubs. Yeah. I got through it very quickly. Scrubs is okay, though. There's way worse shows you could watch. Sure. I did that with, like, a couple seasons of Supernatural when I was watching all oh, Supernatural. Oh, yeah, 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 I for was sure. just like, oh, who needs sleep? Uh, not me. I definitely I'm did just... that, specifically with Supernatural, 100%. I'm gonna watch these men frown at each other in mm -hmm. ten layers of clothing. They do and that they a lot. Kiss. Um, I... I'm gonna turn up your mic, Nikki, for a No. No? I was going to okay. just turn it up in Discord so I can That's hear you fine. about it. <sighs> that seemed, like, weirdly aggressive. <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't mean for it. <laughs> no, it's been a long okay. day. Just that whole yeah, exchange felt out. weirdly aggressive. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to be aggressive. No, I'm sorry. My It's been <laughs> a long one. No, it seems weirdly <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> Are there <laughs> passive aggressive tactics games? Oh, almost certainly. Um, I think Monkey Island, all the insults are fighting. That's definitely that. It's okay. Uh, mangled notebook. Smells of sweat and alcohol. Leave through the notebook. 
Illegal SimSense rides and the names of clients who purchase them. For BTL names. Interesting clients. How names. does the notebook smell like sweat? I guess if you're Ooh. like carrying it very close to your body. Yeah, what if you had it like opened up so the paper was like, you know how you, when you open a notebook to read it, right? Um, and then you just like put it on against your chest and just wore it like that all day, like a like a chest plate. Well, they say Napoleon carried his favorite book around with him, like in his clothes. Oh, so interesting. So maybe it's like that. I didn't know that. Do they know what book it was? Uh, I believe it was a Goethe book, and it may have been The Sorrows of Young Werther. But I'm not sure. It's definitely Goethe, though. Okay. That's the rumor, at least. I don't Hello. know but, like, any uh, of those names. Hello. Do I sound better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. It's okay. Don't be sorry. You sound so, like, it's... I feel like I've harmed you. No, you didn't <laughs> harm me. The world harmed me today. I'm sorry. That's my terrible. all. All of my numbers went down. Well, they're back up now, but the numbers went down. Not the numbers. Um, yeah, the numbers went down. Tell me about the numbers, Nikki. Uh, let me tell you about my numbers. Please, tell today, me about the numbers. Uh, today, my numbers have gone up to the tune of one hundred and sixty-three dollars and sixty-nine cents. Oh, did you buy stonks? I of course bought stonks. Oh, okay, great, 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 great. <laughs> it's the only way I'm gonna get out. It's the only way I, it, I bought. I bought so much Dogecoin. <laughs> I bought. Um, Did you really? Well, yeah, I have. Uh, it's worth four cents right now. Oh, that's, oh, that's so exciting. high. It's Should fucking I buy Dogecoin? Huge. Buy Dogecoin. I don't know. Don't. I don't know. Diamond well, if hands, I buy maybe. Do Dogecoin, won't your Dogecoin be worth more? Yes. It's fucked up. You, everyone buy Dogecoin, except I legally can't say that this is not financial advice. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna use buy this. No, Why? Yeah, and, and the number will go up. Nikki did such a good job of selling it just now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, okay. I don't understand literally any of it, but here's what I, here's what I here's what I do know. I've made <laughs> over the Sorry. past week a hundred and sixty two dollars and ninety six cents, and I don't That's get it. <laughs> And I'm this sorry. morning I was sad because the numbers were red, but the numbers are green again. <laughs> <laughs> like in a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had taken down the name of the person who did it. I saw a good tweet today that it was just like some guy uh, streaming different like stocks on Twitch and like talking mm -hmm. about like look at this look at this line here look at this line this line is red you want it to be green. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first mistake right uh, here. It's a bad wrong color. <laughs> If it were me, I would simply uh, buy Nickel numbers that green. would go up. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, downloading Doge. How did you buy it as an app? Robinhood. Yeah. yeah, well, no, I downloaded well, Robinhood. Ro I've had broken now. Right? Robinhood's the bad one, but they fixed it. It's unclear. Um, but that's where my money is. So uh, I'm going to leave it there until this. I pull out. No, 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 LB. It's good. Here, I'm not listen. getting Robinhood though. Well, no, but if I send if I send you my invite, we'll both get a free stock. To think but about I don't want to do that. No, but it's it's a free stock LV. Yeah, but that's not. No, nah, just check your no, Discord. It's free stock. It's free stock. It's free. Uh, it's free, free real estate. estate. Here, I just sent it to you on Discord. <laughs> no, listen, it's fine. I mean, you the, just have. To, it's only four cents, LV. They wouldn't let that um, NASCAR car have exactly Dogecoin on it if it was bad. If it wasn't you. real, exactly. Yeah. Listen, if you if you're truly really trying to get into the into the cyber of Shadowrun Returns, you have to buy a currency you don't understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, that said, I will do that. See? Wait, or is it gonna is it? What? What's up? I can't am answer I none of some, your questions. Am, am I gonna get on some weird email list? No. Well, I think I'm going to definitely get on some. No. Weird email what? List. What weird email? I mean, I already have your email. I haven't. The, the number of emails that I could be sending to all of you, but I'm not, is so high. It's like that time I, it's like that time I signed John up for a knife defense course. Remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I don't know about Dogecoin, but I do remember the time that you signed up John for a knife defense course without telling him. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucked up because the pictures in the knife defense course were so yeah, so a so graphic. Well, yeah. Okay, well, number. it's too late for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, I'm, Wait, not, Nikki? I'm not following. You've, you've gone where I can't follow. Yeah, I'm not fine. giving Robin Hood my social security number. All right, fine. It's the government anyway. They already have it. 
Make you it's think not the government. Uh, Robin Hood's not the government. Prince John ever was since, the government. Ever since I, oh, makes you think. Ever since I had to give Disney my social security number on a piece of paper. <laughs> Why did you have um, to do that? Well, in, in my last job when I was um, working, uh, when I was like running the YouTube channel, the only the Disney Princess YouTube channel, the only way they would give me a Disney contractor email address was if I gave them my social security number so they could run a background check to make sure I wasn't a child predator. Right. So I had to give them my email address, but the only way they would accept it was written down on a piece of paper that I then had to uh, scan and send via regular ass Gmail. Hmm. <laughs> so Not ever since then, yeah, exactly. So ever since then, I don't care, you know, because that information's already out there. You're a lost. It's guy. already out there. Exactly. I mean, That's listen, whoever question. whoever steals my identity is going to be sorely disappointed with the amount of money I have. Well, I have <laughs> an idea of, okay, I have an idea for how we can keep our identities safer. Okay. And that is, we stop saying our birthdays in this fucked up stupid calendar that we all, everyone uses that sucks. Mm. And okay. we switch to talking about our birthdays in the French Republican calendar that's very confusing and no one will ever be able to understand. Oh, now, I remember explain that. Explain that calendar to me. Okay, so um, back in the French Revolution times, they were like, this is the current cal- the current calendar, this is bad. We don't want this. That's the calendar Actually, of the oppressor. Yeah, this is the calendar of the oppressor. It sucks. It's like all about the monarchy and the church, all kinds of bad stuff. No, we need a new, cooler calendar. Guess how many how many days are in the week? You know how many? Eight, nine, eleven? Ten. I was close. You were very close. <laughs> It's like a metric calendar. No- the it's like a year, stupid. The year starts in September. <laughs> oh, sorry. The year starts. The, the um. The year starts in Vendemiaire. Okay, so September. In the autumn. In, in the autumn equinox is the new year. All the days, no more saints. Saints' days are over. Every day is now like a plant or an animal Ooh, or something shit. related oh, to well. yeah, something cool like that. Okay. Something- <laughs> I punched me really hard and I now, died. You're dead, huh? You got killed. I got yeah. killed, but that is on me for not healing. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, Nikki? The Dogecoin already went down? Yeah, it's down to left. three cents. <laughs> no, but let's think, think about it this way. You can get more, though, because it's only three cents. Oh. If you can find, if someone can find me an app that is the no, right... No, you, just... you, you have to give someone your social security number, because if you... I have to give my you... social security number to buy Dogecoin? Yes, because it's technically like investment, so the IRS has to f- know about it. You have to like declare it on your taxes if you make any money off of it. I can just buy some gold from a, 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 a guy. stranger. Now that's true. On the street, and they that's don't need true. anything. Yeah, absolutely not. Everything about the UI in this game is inscrutable. <laughs> yeah, I would actually go so far as to say that it's bad. I, I know that these games get better as you go along. I've heard that this is the worst one of these games, mostly because the like actual controls are not very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, like um, I know in Dragonfall, you have like a real team. Like This one, it's like people kind of just like weave in and out of your life like whenever they feel like it. Um, in Dragonfall, you actually have like a real team. And I would love that but we'll get there okay these guys don't like me they're gonna do some bad stuff i don't want to kill the civilians so they're trying to use civilians against me too because they're control mind controlling the civilians through their drug brains Mm. hate that yeah i hate it when that happens yeah yeah it's really 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 rough the french revolutionary calendar about as confusing as the (laughs) ui maybe I'm trying to get a handle on the French Revolutionary calendar. I think my birthday, oh, go ahead. my new birthday, is uh, Park Day. Park oh, Day. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh the where is it? Oh, uh, the twentieth of Mesidor. Mesidor. Park Day. Okay. So I'm in. Where's December? Autumn months. Wait, what? How many months are in autumn? Eight, one, two, ten. three, four. There's three six, months seven, per nine. season. Oh, okay, I'm looking at Wikipedia. I'm looking at familysearch.org, and it says autumn months. And then there's a big table. 
And then there's yeah. 14 things in the table. What's your birthday? Uh, December 2nd. December 2nd. Okay. So your birthday is probably... So it's like one of these three because it, 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 like, it doesn't map one to one. And that's why it's so good for preventing identity theft. I'm Frim. Frim. I'm sorry. Frimer. Who? Frimer. Frimer. So you're either cedar, wax, or horseradish. Yeah, lit. Yeah. I would love to be born under the horseradish moon. Right? Uh, but the best is like the last day of the month is like, uh, like a tool. Oh, so like, uh, like the thirtieth of Frumare, you're a sh- like that's the day of the shovel. Oh wow! Oh hell yeah! <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh okay, the tenth is also the tenth and the twentieth are also all tools. So that's a mean thing to say about the tenth and the twentieth. <laughs> no, but they're cool. Uh, you could be the axe. That's uh, the tenth of Pluvois. Oh wait, Ooh. that's tomorrow. <gasps> oh like, shit! Yeah. How are we celebrating? Pluvios, pluvios. How are we celebrating? Celebrating Axe Day? Chopping? Oh. What's it? Thank Do I? Know. Okay, so I can. Oh, here's the thing. Um, okay, I'm gonna jack into this computer. I don't have any programs or espers or ESPs, so I don't know if I can actually do anything inside the computer, but I'm gonna jack into cyberspace real quick and just see what happens. Okay. Because I feel like if you have the opportunity to jack into cyberspace and you don't take yeah, it... Yeah, you gotta jack into cyberspace. Yeah, you gotta... Yeah. gotta yeah. That's leaving money on the table if you're not That's jacking That's leaving in. money on the table. Sorry, Addy. Blaine Gravy, my friend Addy, is like, she knows. She's like, yes, the 10th, 20th, and 30th. Those are all the tool days. Oh. I don't know the... I don't know the calendar as well. They should move the Animal Crossing to this system. Yeah! Oh! Can you... Okay, wait. That's, that's what should happen after tom nick gets overthrown Mm -hmm. and we move to like a true you know like i think like something more like the paris commune Mm. rather than the first republic like like really radical really cool thing yeah and then we switch to the new system but like it'd be a whole storyline i love that I i would start playing animal crossing again if that happens if i could overthrow tom nook stock update um I've lost $53 in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love stock. Yeah. Okay, so I'm using... Okay, nope. Nope. Don't got anything. Can't do anything. Can I punch? Okay, I can... Sh- oh, well, I missed. This looks like... You know in Mega Man Battle Network, yeah. when you jack in, it uh-huh. looks like that. It's literally Except Mega Man Battle Network, yeah. The graphics are less good. Oh. Well, that's not... Uh, am so I is this wrong? where we are right now in actual cyberspace? Yeah. It, it looks like this, actually? Yeah, just like in real cyberspace. Like, when we, when you and I go into cyberspace uh, every day, when we jack in, yeah. it looks exactly like this. <laughs> jack in for work! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> jack does, in mean, here. Does, that mean, does that mean that if, like, another person were to walk into this room while you're, I assume, crouching behind a box and shot you in the back of the head what would happen i would die from being shot in the back of the head interesting that's literally i'm literally over here so my allies have to protect me ah uh, so who did you just hit oh uh this guy <laughs> so this guy over here he was the decker you see how he's stunned now i i broke his uh, like cyber brain i see i blew his cyber mind, I his cyber mind freaked his bean i freaked that bean a freak of a bean. Oh, bugs. A freak of a bean. Or those sparks. Oh, that's sparks. I got electrocuted by this fucking demon that this person summoned. I guess. That's cool. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's I mean, you're cool. not wrong. I'm just, I need to figure out how to kill them to make their demon go away, I think. <laughs> You've got a Nintendo Power Glove and an Oculus Rift on. <laughs> <laughs> walking in, walking into target. That's what Cyberpunk 2077 feels like. Yeah, it really, really does. That's what the hacking in that game feels like. I was just y'all know about Clubhouse, Clubhouse games like the Twitch no, oh. uh, it's like an app. So it basically is just like it's quote unquote important people oh. doing free podcasts. It's like I don't know how to describe it. it. Basically, it's just like a big conference call with 
important quote unquote important people and then like you can invite your friends so yesterday there was one that had like some folks from xbox khalif was in there um jeff Keeley was in there um and i listened to that for a while and it was fine and then today i got a notification that a different one was happening and as soon as i kind of checked in this lady was like cyberpunk 27 2077 was one of the most immersive games i've ever played um i kind of wish there was a vr aspect and then i immediately closed the app hmm, mm-hmm. that's a, this sounds like a fake platform that it is this sounds like you want an invite <laughs> So remember when TED Talk started and you were, and I was, well, I assume a lot of people were like, this is just a fake thing. This is a scam yeah, yeah, of yeah, some yeah, kind. Yeah. But and now it it's like, can, it, it, yeah, and it's, it was, was very successful. This sounds like it's that. It is. It's group TED Talks. Yeah. So it's TED Chat. TED, yeah, TED Chat. Hi. You want an inviter? Hi, no, me, TED I, Chat. I don't like listening to people talk. Mm, that's smart. Oh, that's pretty good. So you don't want an invite. I mean, I already have no, it queued up. <laughs> How many invites is Nikki going to send me during this stream? <laughs> Just check your Discord. I'll send it. <laughs> Let me just grab this. Ted Talks are on Zoom now. Uh, oh, boy. That's challenging. You know, I actually had a very good Zoom call yesterday with my mom. Oh, yeah. Where we both went that on Zoom fun. and we both muted our mics and did work. Wow. That sounds great. <laughs> that sounds like the best. Oh, my God. That's great. She's so loud, even with her mic muted. Like, I could see her talking to herself and making these, like, she was she was grading papers. And, like, I could see her, like, like leaning forward, craning in, and, like, changing her glasses to read different text. It was, like, it was it's great. Incredible. It was, like, hanging out with my mom for real. I love that. Legitimately. So, yeah. No, it LB, was I can't, legitimately great. I can't invite you, LB, because I don't have your number, but I can't invite Steven, so... Oh, okay. So, well. Oh, I thought you were going to say because I'm not important to them. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's just because I can't. Crucially, um, crucially, crucially. I don't have your number. No one is too important for this thing. <laughs> I gotta believe. <laughs> okay, I did just get the <laughs> invite. Yeah. So, if you just join this kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, if I could just join that real I want to see if we can kind of blow it up from the inside, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, just start, start <laughs> like, name the name the conversation, like, most important folks in gaming, and then just, like, <laughs> do an episode of Friends Reunion in it and oh, see, be great. like, what what happens. Um, What do you think will happen? Like, that's uh, my question. I think question. we get kicked off the platform. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that we would be very popular and we'd all be given, like, six-figure jobs. Oh. Whoa, that would rule. There is a room on here called We're Millionaires and We Want to Give You Money. And it's a bunch of VCs. And that's... a sense. I haven't gone in there, but ostensibly, I think it's like a pitch. It's like Shark room. Tank, but this... not entertaining. <laughs> yeah. What you're describing to me is, like, AOL chat room yeah. of... TED Talk scams. Yeah, I'm just... This is what it's like to get on the bus in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what Clubhouse is. Hold on, I have to turn that. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I don't know how no, I to... I would like to... Uh, okay, so I thought that killing all these bad guys would make it so that these people stopped trying to hurt me, but they are still trying to hurt me. Do I have to hack in? Do I have to finish hacking? Yeah, I think you gotta hack and then rescue their drug brains. Okay. I'll fix their brains. Right? Yeah. I'll defreak their beans, you might say. <laughs> they don't oh. do much damage and they don't move very quickly and they keep uh, missing and running in weird directions, so I don't think I should be too afraid of them. There's so many guys in this room. Well, a lot of them, again, were like, they're, they're normal people and they don't, they don't do much damage, but I don't want to kill them because they're like just people. They're just people. They're just people like you and me. What if God was one of a us. chip head? Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. So end. Oh shit! It's Thursday. Hey everybody! It's Thursday. Hey, oh shit! Everybody! It's Thursday. Okay. So I think I can kill these cubes now because yeah. they're, they're not hard. Fuck those cubes up. Yeah. Anything. Look at him die like that. Ugh! I love it. Okay. Now that they're dead, I can maybe hack that thing. Yes, I can. Okay. What is that thing called? Decking. Gently wind down the puppets. Yes. 
I fixed their brains. Oh, hell yeah! Okay, that was it. I, I fixed their brains. Hey. And now they're leaving. You're a doctor. Yeah, that's what doctors do, is they fix your brain. I mean, some of them do. That's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, they help, they help you. I wouldn't describe, like, you know, people as needing to be fixed, necessarily. What if, I mean, brain surgeons, I think, do mm. fix people's yeah. brain. The, you know what, I forgot, I did forget about brain <laughs> surgery. <laughs> yeah. uh, Wait, did I tell you the name of the doctor my dad saw yesterday? I'm yes. obsessed no. with this name. You did tell me, Al, but I want to hear it again. Dr. Al Pacifico. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking arrest development ass doctor. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm like amazed. My mom was like, yeah, so you talked to Dr. Al Pacifico, and I was like, what? That's incredible. <laughs> we talked to a very, very real doctor who's definitely a doctor called Al Pacifico. <laughs> I had to Google him. I'm like, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh no, my mom, like the stress is getting to my mom. And she's like, yeah. Speaking of doctors. Oh, that's incredible. Oh my God. It really does oh, no, sound like real, a Emerson real development man. character. I want. Uh, Sucks. This website's bad. I can't uh, name them. No, I'll say it. Game Rant is a bad website. Oh. I can't. I don't. They've written an article that says the title, the, the headline is Fuser Gets Free Demo and DLC Roadmap. Yeah. And I've read the whole article, and at no point do they link to this alleged roadmap. Oh, I do hate that. I hate it when articles do that. What are you like? How do you, how are you, how are you doing this? Hmm. Hmm. I can't read these words on the screen, Stephen. Oh, yeah, I'm really. I was wondering about that. I wonder if there is a way to. I think if you streamed in 1080, I mean, not for this one. But I think if you streamed in 1080, I think it would give us enough pixels to be able to read it. No, no, no. Like you're no, no, no. You can leave the right the game resolution at whatever you had it, but the stream output resolution currently is. You cut out there for me. Sorry. It's the the stream out the stream output is 720. Is it 720? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I did is I popped out the video. And uh, tried to make it as big Hello? as I could. Hello? Hello? Did your power uh, go out again? Hold on. <laughs> I'm back. Hello? What's up? Hello? Hi. Hello. My power went out. It's pitch black in my house. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, absolutely no light. I'm so sorry, Nikki. It's fine. Um, anyway, I'm going to go, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can hang out with us if you want to, but I assume you no, probably need to fix your computer to, or we, your We house. have to figure out what we're going to do now that we have no light. Yeah, oh, I would. All right, I'll, I'll, Candles. I'll slide back in if we figure it out. All right, Best bye. Of luck. <laughs> the fox says Nikki has been hacked now. <laughs> yeah, I got oh, no! I got cyberpunk. <laughs> all right, bye, y'all. Bye. Hi, I'm Ashton Cook Kutcher. I almost called him Ashton, Co Ashton Cooker. Hi, I'm the GTA 5 parody character, Ashton Cooker. Oh, uh, boy. Um, Wait, why didn't... Why hasn't Ashton Kutcher released, like, a crockpot or a pressure yeah. cooker and called it the Ashton Cooker? <gasps> he should! He's not doing anything. <laughs> Ashton, what's your problem? He has time to do infomercials, Ashton. I mean, Crockpot is happy. Like, they love partnering with people. They they have WWE Crockpots. Yeah. Crockpot, Ashton Kutcher. You're welcome. Great idea. Has Ashton Kutcher ever been on the WWE? I think so, yes. That, he almost has to be. That is such a, like, per, like that is such a Vince McMahon-ass celebrity guest. Unless he was too famous mm. to get on there. I, I believe he... No, yeah, he hosted Raw in the... In, in the um, guest host era i was pretty sure he had okay remember when grumpy said, cat hosted uh no but oh. i yes i wait i have seen images of that i've tried to like remove all grumpy cat from my brain <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry to bring it up no it's fine i'm I, like i will just forget him again <laughs> in like five minutes <laughs> 
you have like a sort of brain Teflon that is specifically anti Grumpy Cat. Just anything I don't want. Yeah. Just slide right out. That's good. I, I need I need room in my head for all the bone bone. Like that's I've room yeah. in my head for one cat. Yeah. For one celebrity cat, and it's bone bone. That's fair. That's honestly super fair. Bone bone. The greatest of all time. Bone bone is maybe the as far. I mean, I love my cats. My cats are great. I love of them. Of course. But they're not celebrity cats. Yeah, when it comes to celebrity cats, I think he's the greatest of all time. Absolutely. But, like, yeah, in terms of other people, like, actual people's pets, of course, there's... Oh, did you see that cat that I apparently helped somebody, like, I retweeted that the cat needed a home, and somebody adopted the cat, and it's, like, uh, the angel? It's the baby angel, and they tweeted me about it, and I was, like, overwhelmed. Oh, my God. Happiness. That's so good. Uh, Twitter is sometimes good. I love that. And it's... That's the only time. That's the only time that it's good is when but, you help people adopt <laughs> animals. Well, no, I mean, like, look at this beautiful... And I'm I'm horribly allergic to cats. Mm, um, okay. And I love cats. I would be, like, the perfect cat person, right. you know? yeah. You would be. LB, you would be. You would be a I great really cat person. I really would be. And I am, like... I'm... Just, like, when they do the allergy test, they're like, okay, uh. here's the scale of how allergic you can be to something. And so, and here's how allergic you are. I'm like, no, you just said the name of the scale again. And they're like, no, yeah, that's because you're the maximum amount of allergic uh, that a person can be to cats. That sucks so hard. I'm like a little bit allergic. I'm I'm so low allergic that I am able to have two cats in my apartment. It's just that if I get like cat dander in my eyes at all, I, I get yeah. really itchy, puffy eyes, and that's it. As long as I'm careful not to touch my face, which you really shouldn't be doing anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I am usually okay. Fortunately, I'm not allergic to elves. Who's this elf? Uh, this is Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb. Mm-hmm. She's the bartender who works at this bar that is kind of like in the basement is kind of my home base. Cool. Um, the lady who runs this bar, Mrs. Kubota. I always I can always get the um, vowels wrong, the order of the vowels. So, uh, it's Kubota. Kubota. She um, runs this place and she's kind of the, um, like, some kind of, like, weird uh, um, criminal fixer, I think, um, who helps people like me take down corporations and stuff. Um, And uh, Cherry Bomb works for her. And so they've been helping me. Um, (coughs) Mrs. Kubota was also the one who gave uh, Coyote a cool new arm. Well, apparently, uh... Philip the Snowman says that Kubota is the name of the Japanese gardens south of Seattle. Oh, that makes perfect sense, because this game takes place in Seattle. I want to go to Seattle. I want to go to some Japanese gardens south of Seattle, or here. Yeah, that would be awesome. I liked Seattle a lot the few times that I was there. They used to host the Dota 2 International Championships there. Um, And I would go for that all the time, because I used to play... I don't know if people in the chat know this about me, but I used to play Dota a lot. Um, I used to cover it for Red Bull. That was my first job out of college, was writing about Dota 2 for Red Bull. <sighs> I just go up there a lot, because uh, family up there and all my friends moved to Seattle. Is so. that close to British Columbia? Yeah. Okay. British Columbia is the part of Canada that's north of Washington State. Okay, perfect. That but, makes sense. Uh, but like Victoria is an island, um, and you can get to Victoria like really fast from Seattle. Yeah. Uh, okay. And like, and yeah, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia is like very far south, also. So it's like a fast drive. <sighs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I think the Discord call cuts us off for a few seconds. So sometimes I think I miss like the beginning or end of a sentence a couple times so if I'm asking weird questions sometimes that you've already explained before oh. um, I'm sorry no worries do not worry about it oh, I'm looking at this uh, this list of new fuser oh hell yeah core gameplay using the 8 tracks including all star by smash mouth hell yeah okay they know what they've got on their hands then is what wow. I'm hearing this just like three this lineup of three songs rage against the machine killing in the name okay smash mouth all-star and warren g and nate dog regulate like that's the full range of music right there yeah that's all three kinds of of song (laughs) i thought regulate was already in there though i'm almost certain i I played that in the um 
I almost, I'm almost certain I played that back at uh, PAX last year. Well, then maybe... Yeah, I haven't really read this whole... I didn't actually read all the text in this article. Oh, that's Just kind of looked at the lists of things. Okay. Okay, but yeah. They're the demo tracks. Always put All-Star in your demo, Blackjack Attack says. I agree. Yeah, Fuser is a really great game um, and has a good demo, and... I don't know what else to say about it. Like, I'm I'm upset that Nikki isn't doing Friday Night Fuser so much anymore because they're just not putting out new tracks quickly enough to uh, well, sustain a weekly thing. But hopefully, the new tracks will get some Friday Night Fuser going in because yeah, it's like actually good. Yeah, to the ears. I loved it. I genuinely loved just sitting there. I would just <laughs> like put Friday Night Fuser on in the background and like I don't know, watch The Mandalorian or something. I forget what I was doing. Nice. I finished watching The Mandalorian actually. Yeah, I'm a couple episodes into season two. Oh, okay. I won't say anything then. Just did the scary ice spiders. The scary ice spiders, yeah. Did not care for those. Good looking. Like, like that show, the CG in that show is actually, like, really impressive sometimes. Yeah. For, like, a TV show. I need to, like, really, like, do a notes app apology or something for how wrong I was about Baby Yoda. Like, I feel really bad about it. Oh, I was so were wrong. you wrong? Like, Baby Yoda's the best. I now, like, understand people who want kids. Oh, of that wow. Okay. I love that puppet. I'm crazy about that puppet. Uh-huh. Yeah. I believe that. Like, I mean, honestly, I don't feel the same way about the kids part, but I love Baby Yoda. And, like, usually... If I could, if I could have one, I would, like, get my shit together so I could be a parent. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just because of Baby Yoda? No, no, no. Only if I could have a baby Yoda. If you could want... have a baby Yoda. Yeah, no. Not a human one. Yes. Only that baby. Got it. Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense now. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, um, I was like, I love The Last Jedi. That's like my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, I still think the Porgs, I hated the Porgs as a concept. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you've seen... I know the about stuff. the porgs. Okay. Those were those birds that they turned into little bird guys. And that they murdered a bunch. Um, I hated those because it was just like, they were like, so they felt like things that were designed to just be toys, which, I mean, that's all of Star Wars, but they like yeah. felt so naked about it with the porgs because they, they were just like, here's this just like little potato that has no seeming like niche in the food chain whatsoever it serves no purpose except to be cute and then get horribly murdered by Chewbacca I guess that was weird <laughs> um, it was because they, there were actual birds on the island right and they had to like oh they had to CG or was them? that just propaganda oh maybe I don't know I actually didn't know about that part propaganda or not maybe I'm just a mark Blackjack Attack, okay, if I started laughing there, it was because I did read Blackjack Attack saying Mandalorian should have had All-Star, which <laughs> I, I would love to see uh, any member of the Mandalorian cast oh. dance to All-Star, but actually, uh, particularly going back to season one, uh, Mr. Werner Herzog, mm. grooving the All-Star, uh, or, you know, talking about All-Star, did you see the um, interview he did with Jenkin Magazine about video, uh, sorry, about skateboarding? No, what? What, what, what? what did he say? The best shit. I should, I'll, I'll <laughs> link it. It's so... I, 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 can, I cannot do it justice. Um, it's fantastic. I fucking believe it. That guy does some good interviews. Um, he's, yeah, he's very good at being famous. The interview... The last interview I saw with him was him explaining that like they were going to make Baby Yoda CG. Um, and then, uh, like, they showed him the puppet, and they were like, ah, we, th we think we're actually just gonna replace it with, like, a cartoon. We're just gonna make it CG. And he told them no. And he was like, the first time I saw it, I wept openly. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> use this, uh, like, a cartoon. There's no, there's no truth in the cartoon, in the, in the CG. You must use this puppet. <laughs> you built this beautiful oh, thing. Good for him. He's right. <laughs> he was right. Thank He's you. absolutely right. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Herzog. I mean, I'm I'm biased because I just really love practical effects and puppets and stuff. I oh, love. Oh yeah, puppets are great. <sighs> Everything should be puppets. Everything should be puppets. More puppets in media. Uh, this is Sam's sister. I'm telling her that her brother was murdered. Um, was he? Yeah, because he was one of the Ripper victims. Oh shit! He had like his liver taken or something. 
Uh, and I'm just informing her that her brother's been murdered, and she's like, it's not a surprise, he ran in a lot of bad crowds. Um, asking me if I'm a cop. I am not. I'm a- I'm Mavis Beacon. There's an official police report going on. Why not let the professionals handle this? I made fun of the cops. Ha ha ha! Uh, aha, I'm just gonna be honest with her and tell her that uh, I'm in it for this m for the money. Telling her about the Dead Man Switch. I think that's what this game's campaign nice. is called: is the Dead Man Switch. Listen to me, Mavis Beacon. <laughs> you seem like a decent person. <laughs> but I'm gonna move on with my life. Uh-huh. She seems like she's, uh, ha lived a tough life. Is she like a popped collar going on there? I think it's like a really high popped collar, yeah. Like, I think it's maybe designed to be popped? Yeah, like a- is that like a cape or a- Coats? Oh yeah, I'm, my my character is kind of blocking her 3D model, but maybe we can see afterwards. Okay, cool. These are the these are the pressing questions I need to ask. No, absolutely, yeah. The fashion of like this universe is like huge. I'm wearing like a weird gas mask rubber suit. <laughs> Useful. She doesn't want me to investigate the death anymore, by the sound of it. She wants this to be over and done with. It's very suspicious, Jessica. Yeah, Jessica Watts. We're like, Don't you what's want your... going on? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Don't you watch your what? Sorry. Oh, I... Oh, don't you? Yeah, you don't want your brother's murder solved? Apparently. Come on, Jessica. You're being, like, also look how suspicious she's being. She's looking out of the corner of her eye. Mm-hmm. She's like, a like... side part. A suspicious side part. She's the richest looking person in this bar, which I just mm. immediately, in anything cyberpunk, if somebody looks like they have money, I do not trust that motherfucker. That's a good point. Uh, Nikki has returned to the chat. <laughs> And <laughs> Dogecoin's back in four cents, and it's starting cold in the Nikki Grayson household. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so she kind of- I think she just wants to move on with her life. She doesn't want to, like, you know, she's had a hard life. It sounds like um, their mother is no longer alive, and Sam also died now, and she's just like, hey, Listen, I, I tried to keep up with my family, but they did not want any part of me, so I don't want to get wrapped up. I just want to be over it and move on and find my own way. Well, We're once we clear you from suspicion, Jessica, you can move on- you can be on your way. Exactly, Jessica. I found just pictures of you Just tell us everything together. you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm asking her where she was the night of his murder. I will overlook the implied accusation and tell you that I was at a fundraiser all evening. A very crowded Ugh. fundraiser. Bet she's on that app that Nikki was talking oh about. Oh my god, she definitely is. Uh, I, I am looking forward to Columboing this motherfucker, though. Like, just absolutely, like, one more thing. Your brother was killed in your apartment! Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the point of solving any mystery, right? That's true, is so that you could, like, get one over at somebody at the end. Yeah! Did, have you ever watched Columbo? I haven't ever watched Columbo. I'm familiar with Peter Falk, but not from Columbo. P Peter Falk's great. I, I love Peter the Falk. The best, yeah. I think I will have my Columbo moment. I have a lot of friends who've been uh, Columbo pilled in the last year, <laughs> really enjoying their time watching Columbo. And I'm sure my time will come. I, th I think I got Columbo pilled like three years ago, three four years ago, right before yeah. Fanbyte. Yeah, it was all on Netflix at some point. I think. Cool. Yeah, I think I remember that. It was. Uh, we have like a local channel uh, that just play that would just play old TV. Oh, and, like a uh, mini TV. Yeah, before me, it was like a like me TV, but it was like a local station. Okay, 
Um, actually, you know what? It may just be me TV. It may just be the same thing. Okay. Um, but K Doc back in the day, they played a lot of Columbo, and my friend, like a close friend of mine, was like very into it. Oh wow! Okay. She was the first person I ever knew who got Columbo built. <laughs> And that's like true dedication because that's watching it on actual scheduled TV where you can't yeah. just like binge it. Yeah. I've never been into like police procedurals or detective type shows like basically ever, but um, Columbo got me. I don't know why. I mean, part of it is Peter Falk. Peter Falk is just incredibly He's charming. Great. Yeah. He's wonderful. Uh, and then Merritt turned me on to what ended up becoming like one of my new favorite movies of all time, which was a detective movie, which is the. Um, um, God, what was it? it's the? Uh, oh my God! Now I suddenly I can never keep the, them straight. It's that one guy, that one detective, Maltese Falcon guy, Sam Spade. No, it's Sam Spade, different guy. Oh. That one, yeah, I know. Are you talking about? Um, <laughs> I don't know that movie. Are you talking about the long goodbye? The long goodbye. So the reason I always get I confused that, is yeah. I keep thinking to it's myself, Philip Marlowe. Philip Marlowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always want to say, like, it's the long kiss goodnight. And it's just like, wait, no, it's not. It's definitely not that. So it's got to be something else. And But it's the long goodbye is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, despite my inability to remember the name of the movie whatsoever, um, ended up being one of my all time favorite movies. I fucking loved that movie. Seen it. But yeah, that's uh, uh, Elliot Gould, right? Elliot Gould. Yeah. is like yeah. the f- most attractive he's ever been in his entire life throughout that entire movie. It's on my watch list on Letterboxd. I just have not gotten to it. I remember my parents, like, read all of the Philip Marlowe novels um, at one point. I think, like, when I left for college. Oh, yeah? Just, like, read all of them, got really into them. Yeah. Um, And... They... But I've, I've never... I have never read one. I've read the first one. I read The Big Sleep. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe I have read The Big Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I may have read that in, like, high school. Uh, I read it, like, a couple years ago, I guess. I was kind of turned off because there's, like, some really rampant homophobia in that book. Yeah. And so I was like, mm, maybe I don't need to continue reading Philip Marlowe books. So I almost didn't watch um, the... Oh my god, the long goodbye. The long goodbye. I almost didn't watch the long goodbye because I was like, I don't know, I don't like Philip Marlowe very much from that one experience I've had. And then um, I ended up watching it for You Love to See It. And like you know, like I said, I fucking loved it. Bantam Sam 13 has asked us for our thoughts on the Sandman casting. Oh, have you seen this? I am looking it up now. I don't know most of those actors. I, I know Charles Dance, I know Gwendolyn Christie, and that's kind of it. I think Gwendolyn Christie is really, really good for Lucifer. I think I saw some other people out there saying that Gwendolyn Christie could have played Desire, and I think that would have been really, really good. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I don't really remember. This is what the first uh, they're doing. Like, what are they? Which Sandman stuff are they adopting? I don't know. I assume like just I assume it'll probably be like a pretty original story that maybe pulls some ideas from okay. those comics or the early comics because that stuff has so much like early on that has so many crossovers with like DC characters I don't know if they're going to do that I don't know if they're going to pull in like John Constantine and um, John D and stuff Dr. Destiny the Martian yeah. Manhunter shows up for a while in a Sandman comic I don't know if this is something I really would have been like <laughs> I would have had a lot of passionate opinions about when I was like probably 12 ages 12 through 20. Mm, I would mm-hmm. have like had a lot to say about this. And now I'm just like, okay, right. <laughs> like, I don't even know where my, uh, like I had, yeah, I brought the full, um, I brought like my full set of graphic novels to college with me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so heavy. Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I'm like, no, I need these. Um, okay, Phantom Sam thirteen. It says, my understanding is they are straight up adapting the books essentially as they are. So the- Addy, you did the same thing. I feel so. I feel so much. Less oh yeah. I definitely brought. Uh, probably not my entire collection, but I definitely brought a bunch. Um, I, I like I'm with my people. Okay, I feel less like embarrassed because that's so much. Oh yeah, stuff. like like such a like such a like 18 year old 
doing a big move for the first time mm -hmm. on your own decision of like, yeah, all these, these, this very heavy collection of books. I need to take this with me when I move. <laughs> Did you have the absolute Sandman, like the big leather bound hardcover ones that were incredibly heavy? No, I just heavy? had like, I didn't have those. I just had the, all of the, um, sorry, Addy's saying, I must have these comics about how this dude sucks to date. The worst to date. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, so annoying. I was death for Halloween also in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> <One year. laughs> um, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, death is a good one, though. Like, that's a good bolt. It's such an easy costume to throw together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, last minute. Like, very, very easy one. Especially if you're the kind of teenager who just has a top hat lying around oh, with a lot of eyeliner. Oh, and you did, huh? <laughs> like, okay. okay. Yeah, and a lot of black clothes. Like, easy. And throw this together. Uh, yeah. So this is gonna be, like, a TV show? Is it, like, an HBO thing? Is that what it is? So it wouldn't be age, uh, TV. It would no, be it's really on. Uh, I don't even know where this is going to be. Somebody, uh, Blackjack Attack asks, is it going to be an uh, American Gods? Uh, I it, or maybe it's going to be a not. Netflix. Yeah, maybe. Thing. It looked so. I, I, I can actually probably answer this very quickly. Um, cause I posted the tweet where they showed off the, um, uh, casting into our Slack earlier today. I can probably find that link, and I bet that link will say where it's at. Sorry, I know I'm playing a game over here too, but this is very important stuff. I spent so much money on Sandman comics. Netflix. It's a Netflix show. Netflix show, okay. It's Netflix and Warner Brothers. That's interesting to me. The the idea that they're going to just adapt straight up that old stuff as is. I guess if they have Warden Brothers involved, they can bring on the Martian Manhunter and stuff. It's just going to be so weird for people who, like, come in to watch that show and are like, oh, this is like this prestige goth-like thing. And then, I don't know, here's fucking Batman <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> I didn't re I, I never read any DC comics when I was a kid and I like jumped into the Sandman as like this is this isn't comics this is graphic novel. Oh yes. And I 100%. rolled with the bullshit. I rolled with the bullshit. So <laughs> and, and I mean that was, you know, the early 2000s and now superheroes are people can people can think of superheroes as being a little prestige. That's sometimes. true. I mean that's literally what they're trying to do with that new Batman movie, right? Is like it's going to be like a uh, prestige murder mystery like I'm just hoping for abject thing. Batman I'm just hoping for Robert Pattinson just in pissing himself in the bat suit <laughs> just like fingers crossed I want basically the lighthouse but Batman oh my god <laughs> up Batman throwing up just like having a terrible time sobbing I mean that's uh, that's also what the Joker movie promised to be right but is not very good that, that's not that it, but like the Joker like that that's not interesting I want to no. see Batman just wrecked you want to see batman's dick on screen um i don't even need to see his dick on screen i just need to know his dick is having the worst time <laughs> that's true like, he's, he's like we're there we're showing us the suffering batman uh, but like is he he's actually usually fine he's actually usually fine yeah I would say, in fact, some of the stories where he's completely fine are my favorite. Some of my favorite Batman stories. I think Adam West Batman really, really good. Yeah. So if you're gonna show me fuck like messed up Batman, I just want to see him. You know, like uh, as we discussed on today's, you love to see it in the kind of Tom Hardy Venom 2018 mold of superhero. Just mm. disgusting. Yeah. I want. I want that. Just a trash being. Yeah. More disgusting superheroes, please. Just eating garbage having a bad time is that doom patrol i haven't watched doom patrol but i i got, always kind of got the impression that it, like doom patrol is like we've got the worst superpowers or our superpowers make us miserable and we're just kind of trying to get by i think that was always the pitch of doom patrol the comic as well but i've not watched the tv series yeah i don't know i haven't uh i kept, i feel like a whole crowd of people all doing that sounds a little, like a little, a little exhausting much, yeah as they all live in like a dorm together or something, I think. I do like a dorm. I honestly, I'm, I'm making up some of this as I go along based on like what little I've seen on the screen uh, <laughs> from like ads for Doom Patrol. Not watch Doom Patrol. Yeah, Black Jack like, Texas. I like that's a superhero the dorm though. I like a superhero dorm. Yeah. Do you uh, watch or read the Umbrella Academy? 
I no, I didn't. I'm I'm t- kind of taking mostly a superhero break. Sure. An extended one, but in general, I like a dorm. Cuz then you get the things like X-Men baseball. Yeah, which is I love that. Kind of shit. The ideal. That is the ideal. I thought that uh, X-Men Evolution, that kind of like post 90s X-Men X-Men cartoon that oh, they did for a few years, that was Everyone really had good. the great cargo flares. Mm-hmm. Really good. Like, that show was incredibly good about just, like, here's all the X-Men hanging out together, fucking playing cards, baseball, and, like, hanging out and having crushes on each other. I love that. I think my tweets about it are probably gone, but I I did definitely uh, um, live tweet watching those. Oh. I had a very nice time. Yeah. (sighs) <sighs> Sorry, Mavis. I've been ignoring you. Oh, so uh, bad. Mavis is kind of in a holding pattern anyway right here. Um, we, we talked to uh, Sam's sister. Uh, figured that out. Okay. Remember um, her. Who's this? Dr. Sarah Castle. Yeah, she's the doctor who works here. Ooh, but she has an impish friend. Yeah. I think she's a magic doctor, and she uses like so her cool. imp to heal people. That's, again, a really an ideal situation. Yeah, I would love to have, like, a little imp friend that allowed me to heal people. Just trying to make sure that I make it back alive. So she's got my best interest at heart. I like that. Thank you, Sarah. Doctor. Sorry, Dr. Castle. Doctor. Shouldn't be so familiar. Yeah. Should show, show, show some respect. Right. To the doctor. I always forget to do stuff like that. That's why I never get jury. That's why, like, I can never get on a jury. Mm. Because I'm very disrespectful, like, naturally. To, like, lawyers and judges and stuff? Yeah. Like, I, uh, on one jury selection panel, like, I made a joke to the judge and, like, didn't call them your honor. And I was immediately, like, no thank you. Did you want to be there, though? I don't know. I didn't have a job at the time. That was was up in the air. Okay. I sp- oh, yeah, I, I, I think I do a good job. I do a good job on a jury. I bet also. you would. Yeah. You know? Or maybe I had a I maybe had like a writing job that was like a freelance thing, so I could have still done it. Oh sure. But all yeah. the t- all the times I ever got called to jury duty, it was like in when I was in college and working four jobs at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> nope, I can't. The first time I went to jury duty, uh I, went, I made it to jury selection, and I was 19 and just, like, a um, fucking mess. Mm. Um, and I was so angry that they, I felt such, like, the pang. I, like, I was so sensitive that the pang of being rejected from the jury, like, really stuck with me <laughs> to the point that I made a Craigslist post <laughs> asking <laughs> all the lawyers why they didn't pick me. <laughs> This was shortly before I dropped out of college the first time. (laughs) I did not get a response. No? Okay, no. They weren't. uh... (laughs) That's amazing, Elfie. I love that so much. (laughs) I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm not laughing at you. It's just very, very sweet. No, it is funny. That's why I... I wouldn't tell an actually sad story on screen. Oh, okay. I wouldn't bum everybody out like that. No, it's a very <laughs> silly thing to do. Oh, uh, I see my cat is awake now too. Oh, it's food time for him, huh? Oh, exciting! Yeah, and that's why that he's jumping so in front of my computer. <laughs> that sounds so great. You just have a person who feeds you, and then you can yeah. jump in front of their computer, and yeah. you don't have to do any chores. Honestly, I also like having a little person that I get to feed when he's hungry because it's that so, seems so nice. fun. He's so happy about it every single time. It just feels nice. It's a nice thing I get to do. Three times. Do you a think Doctor Sarah Castle feeds her impish friend? Oh uh, yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they're like real or if they're like ectoplasm. I feel like a little demon would be really fun to feed. Ooh yeah. Like I a- mean, unless you have to like feed it like people. Oh yeah, that would suck. But if it was like, oh, I need to feed on you know vibes. Feed <laughs> on vibes, yeah. I'm really psyched about that. <laughs> I just assume demons eat vibes. I don't know. Uh, there was like, I feel like um, Discworld. Did you ever read Discworld at all? I didn't ever read Discworld, no. I loved Discworld. Did um, I read a couple Discworlds, actually? There's a lot of Discworlds, right? 
Oh yeah, there's like there's dozens and dozens of them. I think I maybe read a couple Discworlds. Okay. I've read every single. Were there one like of them. any standalones? Did they have any? Were there like any standalone novels? Most of them are standalone, honestly. Oh, okay, then yeah, 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 yeah. I've definitely read a couple. I just don't really remember anything. Yeah. About them. No, that's fair. That's Timmy Pratchett, right? Yep. Okay, then yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read this. Yeah, that <laughs> was oh because it was uh it was a, a crossover. You you found Good Omens and then found Terry Pratchett afterwards. <laughs> We don't need to. You don't need to call me out like that. <laughs> well, you were into Neil Gaiman. You dressed up as Death from Sandman for Halloween. Once. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I can that's draw exactly lines. What happened? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, that's uh, no, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, no. I, I fucking love Terry Pratchett. I like Terry Pratchett more than I like Neil Gaiman. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely. My mom was also very into. Uh, my mom got me into the Sandman, and my mm. mom. It was my mom's copy of Good Omens that I read. And then we collectively decided by looking at <laughs> Neil Gaiman's works by himself and Terry Pratchett's works by himself that we preferred Terry Pratchett. Oh, nice. As a household. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Little teen LB oh. family I... moment. I was going to talk yeah. to that guy for magic, but I can't do magic for shit. So <laughs> I'm just oh, going to no. walk away. <laughs> uh. Okay, I can More buy some a, programs. A brawn type. Brains and brawn, but not a... No spirit. Not a but spirit. But, like, is there, is there no word that starts with the BR that means, like, mm. magic stuff? Br who's good with words? Br yeah, who... Who's good at wordplay? <laughs> Someone in the chat who's good at wordplay. You're all good at it. You make me laugh all the time with your puns. Please help. <laughs> I'm a fool. <laughs> I can't do these things. <laughs> <laughs> for, for magic. magic. <laughs> <laughs> Stands for beautiful Ronald, Ronald Magic. <laughs> Fuzzy Tipsy says for handishing a wand. Just burr. Oh god. Magic wand go burr. <laughs> uh, no, I can, honestly, uh, nothing's jumping to mind. I, I really can't think of anything. That's okay. Blackjack Attack wants to know what your favorite Discworld novel is, though, Steven. Ooh, that's a tough one. Favorite Discworld novel... I like Death a lot in those books, so I'm tempted to say Hogfather, because Hogfather was one of the first books that I ever saw where it was like, oh, this this looks really cool. Um, I like Sam Vimes. Uh, I've heard that that new show about the Watch and Sam Vimes isn't particularly good or doesn't particularly get like the empathy that... Terry Pratchett really imbues into a lot of his stuff. Um, Hogfather's up there, though. I would say. Uh, and then The Truth. Actually, The Truth was one of the um, books that got me into... I read The Truth, which is a Terry Pratchett uh, Discworld novel, in college. And up until that point, I was not really a writer at all. I was go I was uh, way more into drawing. <clears throat> and wanted to be a comic book uh, artist or a video game concept artist. And then read, uh, got, like, basically really, uh, disheartened by the quality of my drawing a lot of the times, uh, which is an easy thing to do when you're drawing. Um, and then I read The Truth, which is a Discworld book about, like, the invention of journalism in the Discworld universe. And that book made me think, I could write. I could write about stuff. Like, that's so cool. I love that. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, kind of, I, I always worry that it's, like, sounds too like, basic of a reason to get into journalism and writing and stuff like that, oh. but it really is that book. Uh, it was huge. Oh, that's, no, that's super cool. Are you kidding me? The reason I got into journalism was because my friend was doing the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that too. I don't want to be alone. Why not? Yeah. I've been doing it with friends is way better, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm fighting my cat here right now, who's very hungry. <laughs> oh no! We'll feed your cat. We can we can discuss things. We okay. can discuss our our tactics. Oh, we can right. discuss this Run Rocker craft work. Ah, okay. What's everyone's favorite craft work album? <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> what's my favorite craft work album? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I'm trying to think of which Discworld books I read. I definitely like read the ones that came out when I was in high school. Um, Going Postal was one of them. Looking 
this up. Bravado, the most magical word for bards. Gosh, there are actually some. I knew there'd be some. Abracadabra. The thing is that, like, the burr meme has me so, like, set in just going burr anytime I see the letters BR. So. I'm really glad I asked what's your favorite Kraftwerk album and what's your favorite Discworld book at the same time. <laughs> So everybody can answer. They can be like, wait, which one is that? Is there a Discworld book called Autobahn? Sorry about that. That's cool. Ugh. We're talking about Discworld books and Kraftwerk album. <laughs> Both good, I think. Yeah. I've not listened to a ton of Kraftwerk. Oh, they're great. It's, uh, you know, it's German techno. Yeah, they seem great, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I've got variants of them also in high school, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the man machine is good. Yeah. And, and, like, also, such an iconic, like, cover. Mmm. But... <laughs> yeah, I should. I feel like Discworld, for me, I think I read all of them on, like, trips. Mmm. Um,. And that's why I read I read the books that, that were coming out, like at the time, because I they were always at the bookstore at the airport, and like it would be like a special treat, like okay, you got one book, it's your trip present. That's cool. So <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's how I read I read a lot of books that way actually. I read, that's how I got into Harry Potter uh, as like a child child. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. It was like you get one thing, and I was like, well. For, this is severe. It happened to be like a pretty small airport with not a big selection. Because I was like very, I was an anti as a 10 year old. Because um, everybody was really into it. And I was like, ah, I hate all of you. I like gothic literature. I uh, have no friends. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like 10 years old and very serious. And, uh, but yeah, I was like, I guess I'm going to have to read something. Well, you know, I mean, that that didn't bear out in the long run, but at the time, like uh, obviously people, like fun. you know, you know, whatever, like kids. I enjoyed it at the time. You know, it was good for, was good for kids to read, and getting people into reading was always important. I was important yeah. to my parents a lot, or it still is, I guess. But I mean, I'm not a I'm not a child anymore, so they they don't have to tell me to read anymore. <laughs> uh, I got the uh, my mom's trick to get me to read. It wasn't actually that hard. I was very I liked reading a lot, <laughs> but uh, was if I wanted to see a movie. I couldn't see a lot of movies like they weren't appropriate. But if it was based on a book, I could read any book I wanted. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> really bad call on my mom's <laughs> part <laughs> that you can read any book that exists. <laughs> <laughs> like if you can understand it, you're allowed to read it. Like okay, hmm. I, I really read some age inappropriate literature. Like, uh, is there an example, or are you too embarrassed to to say? Uh, I. If, I don't know how familiar you, are, you uh, all of you are with Anne Rice and her her works. Sure. Uh, but my first Anne Rice book, a strange choice, a, a, just a, a baffling age. I read The Witching Hour uh, right about when I turned eleven. Okay. Is that uh, is, so? I don't. I I know of Anne Rice. So I don't know The Witching Hour. The Witching Hour is not a book you, an eleven year old, should read. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's like a very, very, very long um, story of like an entire family of witches, and like it's you know there's a, a lot of a lot of sex stuff in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And like a lot of weird sex. It's you know, it's about it's about the family incubus. Oh, the family incubus. <laughs> the family that everybody incubus. shares. The, 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 well, that everyone in, that you inherit. That you you inherit. pass down from generation oh, okay. to generation. And then somebody's <laughs> like grandma dies, and they get a cool incubus that they get to. That's fuck. literally what happens <laughs> in the Witching Hour books. <laughs> grandma dies, and you get an incubus. That's how it starts. They, like one of the the main character is um, she's been adopted out to a like a distant part of the family, and yeah, her birth mother dies. And she's, you know, doing her thing, being a surgeon in San Francisco, and she gets a she gets an incubus. That's wow. hers now. Yeah, so that's what I read when I was eleven. Uh, but I mean, I also did the I did the um, interview with the vampire stuff, and I got oh yeah, super yeah. into those. See, I mean, that's what I know. Yeah, I mean, it's great. 
vampire yaoi in the 70s <laughs> in vampire form. <laughs> if you look at how if you look at how it's um packaged in definitely in japan but i think in like a lot of places like it is basically like this is a bl novel oh okay yeah it's like packaged and it is that it's, it is that are... it's just i wouldn't expect them to like package it that way i guess but that makes perfect sense yeah so I think I'm going on the shadow run right now. Somebody was talking in there a little bit ago about how I hadn't been on a proper shadow run yet, but I guess I'm going on a shadow run. Oh, I'm so excited. The Nephilim network. Like uh that's is that like an angel thing? It seems to vary. I Nephilim gets thrown around a lot in a lot of different fiction, I feel like, but Nephilim um so, the thing I always see Nephilim associated with, it's like an angel and a demon fucked and this is what you get. You get a Nephilim. Oh, half angel, oh, cool. half demon. They're a thing. I feel like there's an alien cult where it's like, no, the Nephilim are actually aliens. Mm. I don't remember which one that is. I don't know. Is that the Raelians? Raelians, of course, is the Raelianism is the alien cult that was really just about getting this one French guy to like have a lot of sex. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? If you're gonna start a cult anyway. Okay, but what are what is this Nephilim network refer to? Uh, I think it's a place where I can hire cool runners, like really like better runners um, or different runners at the very least. But they have like more specific stuff because this one's like a techno shaman and this one's a tech master and a tech mage, uh, tech war, William Shatner. Um, uh, whereas the other people seem like they're much more basic, but maybe cost less money. Because I'm hiring like temporary squad mates for this mission by the scene. Well, oh, okay. the way it seems. Which I can only afford one right now, which I don't know if I fucked up by buying a bunch of stuff. Maybe I, I fucked up and I should have more than one person with me on this one. Um, somebody in... Um... Oh, Nephilim are the Kickstarter backers, I guess. They're the angel investors. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got him, LB! You did it! I'm wiggling my eyebrows so aggressively, <laughs> I'm about to give me a headache. That's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Hopefully, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm hoping I didn't fuck up by, uh, by spending a bunch of money, but we'll find out. It's the um, only way you learn. Yeah. Buddy. That's true. I, I, I don't imagine they would be like, no, you fucked up so bad that you can't progress with this game. Sorry. Uh, I want to bring a healer, so I'm grabbing Oh, those are healing. always good. Yeah, because I don't really have a healer right now. This person seems fine. They, they're cheaper, too, so I'll maybe get, get them... Okay. Let's try it. You, it says you can still hire more runners, but I don't have enough money, and I don't know how, if I can sell anything in this game to get more money back. So, I think we're gonna have to go with it. Let's do it. Let's... I have guns now. Like, yeah. obviously everything we're is perfect. Fine. We're gonna be fine. Okay, so Blackjack Attack says, you'll notice that almost everyone has a gun. <laughs> Uh, I do so, get... update. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, you're going to talk about the game. I was going to talk about beans. Please talk about the game. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that um, I get one lady for, with me for free, that sister of the dead guy. Um, she's oh, coming cool. with me for free, so I'm, I won't be completely uh, alone. Let's, oh, let's level up, too. Anyway, I want to hear about beans. Genuinely. Oh, no, they just smell really good. Ooh, yeah, I agree with that. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, it's that, you know, when you're cooking something, but it's like you're doing a slow cooking, so your whole place just starts mm. smelling really good and just starts smelling better and better, and you're like, ah, so why did I slow cook this? <laughs> why can't I have it now? Why can't I have the flavor immediately? <laughs> Cause Although, oh, I uh, rehydrated some dried mushrooms for my instant ramen last night. Ooh. It, that was worth the wait. Ooh, that sounds all right. Yeah, it added a lot of time and made the ramen no longer instant. <laughs> but oh, <laughs> that's true, I suppose. <laughs> it was like it really balanced out the whole flavor profile. That's like weird. it was the missing piece. What kind of um, instant ramen was this? Like it was like the ninety nine cent stuff, or is this like some kind of fancy instant ramen? Uh, it is I forgot the name. It's it's like a Korean brand. Um. But I like it because it doesn't have, uh, like, it doesn't have, like, pork or beef stock in oh, it. Because okay. I'm not doing the mammal time. 
Uh, what was it though? It wasn't Shin, Ramyun, what was it? Ah! I don't know my good instant ramen very well, honestly. I well, should! I've gotten, I've gotten pretty into it the last year or so, because I'm not very good, uh, cook. I would so. honestly, and I'm, I'm neither am I. So if you if you do find the, I ask because I would love to know the brand so that I can steal it <laughs> and I can start oh, yeah. buying it too. I would love a good instant ramen brand to be able to buy. That isn't just the like literally like ninety nine cents cup noodles that I buy at the grocery store, yeah. which are fine. Like I I'm I, I'm not too good for it. Okay, this was uh, the Otogi Yol. Ramen. Okay. Hot taste. Hot taste. I'm gonna have to remember that. Good. I can. I mean, I can write up a, a list of my noodle Ooh. recommendations based on the spice level that you are comfortable with. Yeah, I am uh, pretty comfortable with a high level of spice. Great. Then I can recommend a lot of noodles. To you. Oh, great. Um, yeah, no, I, um, we are a, and actually this is one of the reasons that I need to stop doing this so much is just because it's probably not healthy for me. I, we buy a lot of Indian food. <laughs> Um, yeah. I get a lot of uh, vindaloo and biryani every, basically every week, and I it, mean, it can't be good. Indian for me. food is much healthier for you than instant noodles. Oh yeah, but I just mean <laughs> more just like the amount of food that I'm eating every week because they give Got up, it. like we get so much. Yeah, but look, like it's so good as leftovers. So good like, as leftovers. It's in your fridge, and then it gets more delicious every like as you leave it. Yeah, because it's it in the flavor. That's how flavor happens. That is how flavor happens. That's what I've been told. I'm not good at cooking, but I do know that. Uh, I know. Onions are the source of all flavor, and the more you let the flavor sit, the better it is. Mm, okay, okay. More onion, more flavor. So, okay. Explain to me where we are now. We're back on the docks um, that we were okay. at earlier, That we, um, but the cops showed up, the bad cops, the worst cops, I guess showed up and were like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Stop investigating this murder. And I was like, well, what if we come back here later under the cover of night and uh, take over this place okay. instead? And this is where the tactics come in. This is where more tactics happen. This is a shadow run. This is an actual shadow run. Okay. Uh, so uh, Blackjack Attack asks, uh, is it Lone Star? So the cops, is it Lone Star? Uh, Lone Star is the cops that I was talking to earlier, but these guys aren't them. Apparently some other unknown mystery group has shown up and is trying to get in on this stuff. Mystery cops? Ugh, the worst. Fucking hate it, you know? Let's see, can I shoot? Nope, can't do that. Okay, what if I... I'm just gonna have to move this guy here, I think, and be, be okay with that. Armor. Aim. Let's give some armor to Mavis. Keep me this safe. Yeah. I just dropped my phone because Ramba is back on top of my computer trying to get back and stuff, <laughs> even though he has food already. But he's lonely. I can't imagine what having a cat would do to my situation. It would be just chaos all the time. Oh, probably. I mean, it's a like chaos here all the time. I just looked over, I, I just tabbed over to Slack and was like, oh, why do I have a draft in this channel? And the, <laughs> the draft was just like a bunch of line breaks, the number four, and then like three more line breaks. Like, okay. <laughs> I, don't know that <laughs> I love that though. Maybe the ghost cat. That, no, that would be ideal if Ooh. I had a feed of ghost cat. That you didn't have to feed or pay for. Or, or that shots. I'm not allergic to. That you're not allergic to either. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even no, think I about that. I don't know if you can cuddle with a ghost cat. Mm. Or, like, let a ghost cat ride around on my shoulders. Yeah. Oh, Ramba loves to ride on my shoulders. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen images. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I'm very familiar with Steven, editor, Steven, streamer, Steven, friend. Not so familiar with Steven, mode of transportation. No, 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 um, no. So it's very exciting to see you, you know. You know, I contain multitudes is kind of the thing. Like, you know, I like to I like to wear a lot of hats. Like that one guy we saw earlier who clearly has multiple different hats because there's no way he wears that ill-fitting hat all the time. Oh, did you see that picture Chris Jericho posted of his closet? <laughs> yeah, I did. I think I saw you retweet it. Did you see all the hats? <laughs> there's so many hats. And none of them were like, there was no 
<laughs> method to the hat storage. I'm haunted by these hats. Like, a stack of fedoras on a shelf, and then, like, the other shelves with baseball caps, and there was, like, a sun hat. Oh, it, was a, it, it, it haunts it's me. It's nonsense. I don't get it at all. I don't understand what's happening there. I, I guess I don't un honestly understand a lot of things that are happening with Chris Jericho all the time. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Bad I, vibes. Yeah, real bad vibes a lot of the time. <sighs> I got a warehouse key. Nice. Um, yeah, this is very, this to me looks very Fire emblem -y, just in terms of like, you're the little guys running around yeah. fighting each other. So this one is kind of a weird mix because they are like, you know, um, basing their game off of like an existing tabletop RPG where you have like dialogue and, and stuff like that happening all yeah. the time. Um, so there's been a lot of talking, but um, there is combat in these games. And I think they get more combat as you go throughout the series. That makes sense. The other thing, too, is that um, the game that this company made that I actually like most, and one of the reasons I want to go back and play these games, or made me want to play these games, um, is they made a game called Battletech, which is just the fighting. It's just the Fire Emblem stuff, um, but, but with mechs. Ooh, and and cool. I love that game very, very much. You're a mech person, right? I am very much a mech person, yeah. I build Gundam model kits. M Ramba, my cat Ramba, my first cat I've ever had, is named after a mech pilot from uh, the original Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. <laughs> or a Mobile, su mobile cool. Suit Gundam, not Gundam Wing. <laughs> I'm Nader210. I I'm so sorry that I convinced you to look at this Chris Jericho picture. How? The hats, I... The logic of the hats eludes me. <laughs> 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 and I'm... Don't worry too much about it. You aren't going to figure it out. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of us are. I think that's just the lost cause. Oh, shit, I didn't realize I was a bad guy. <laughs> I, thought that, oh, no. I thought I'd killed everybody. Oh, oops, 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 oops. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to shoot him. I'm sorry. No, that's not your fault at all. That was me um, thinking, like, all right, I got this. I've cleaned out the room and then <laughs> running past the guy who shot me. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Ugh, I threw yeah. a magic missile at him, though. That was good. Yeah. Building Gundam models seems like it's very fun. It's so chill. That's why I love it. Like, I don't... I'm, I'm not a... I have never been able to get into the Gundam shows, but mm. I could get it. I, I can... I understand the appeal. I understand the appeal of the shows, though, too. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, building the models seems like... Very fun. I love it. I have not done it in a long time. Um, I should get back to it at some point um, because I have a lot that are sitting in my apartment unbuilt right now. Um, I have a Barbatos Lupus Rex that I need to get around to building sometime. Uh, let's check around and just make sure I'm not missing any loot here. I bet what you... Gundam should I watch instead of The Office? I tried watching the one with the cool guy with the sunglasses. And he's pretending he's a different guy, but he's the same guy. Um, and there's the little guy who's mad. And it's that Gundam. I tried watching that one, it's and I thought a? it was pretty boring. Is that Turn A Gundam? Is the guy with the glasses... Uh, Zeta. Z uh, yeah, it was... Uh... Oh, Mosu Zeta Gundam. Yeah. Oh, That's the cool. guy with the cla glasses, uh, Quattro Bergina. The sunglasses. Yeah, but he's like... He's he's the guy from the other one. Yeah, that's he Char He just put on, like, a cool... He just put on some cool sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> he just he became a cool guy. <laughs> he put on some like, cool no, sunglasses. like, no, recognize me and my cool, new cool guy look, which I love. I love that. Um, and the little angry guy, I also really liked, but I just uh, couldn't Camille? get into the show. Yeah. Camille Be Done. Camille Be Done is really angry <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I loved that. Um, also, I did always pronounce his last name as Biden. <laughs> Re-elect Camille Biden. Joe Biden's other son, Camille Biden. <laughs> oh, Ramba. Oh, I'm so scared. He keeps jumping on my computer to get, get at my face. And I'm so scared he's going to press the power button and turn this game off. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Zeta Gundam is interesting because it is like... It's the sequel to the original series, and it, it the whole thing is that it recasts the good guys from the original series as the bad guys, so it's kind of a weird place to start with. Um, I don't know why I started there. I think I saw... I think it was because I liked uh, Cool Guy. Oh, Quattro. Quattro. 
Yeah. <laughs> Who's definitely not Char Estable. Yeah, I love that. I almost named Ramba. Uh, our, one of our first names that we we're going to pick for him um, before we landed on Ramba was uh, Char. We almost called him Char. Yeah, I just... Uh, I mean, I guess I could probably pick a Gundam based on, like, I don't know, what I would actually like based, rather than what character looks coolest. Oh, but... sure. Yeah, different Gundam series give you very different vibes, too. Yeah. Um, there's like um, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing is like might be kind of up your alley because it's like very intense young boys looking at each other and like say like walking up to people and saying I'll kill you for no real good reason. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, there's um, G Gundam, which is like a kung fu movie, <laughs> but Gundams. I think the only mecha anime I've ever like made it through was um, Evangelion. Oh, really? Okay, that's a pretty good one yeah. to get through, though. It's very different. Think, kind other of thing. than that, yeah. But I think that's the only thing in the genre I've actually like watched all the way through. I like it though. I mean, I, that's and like gotten cool. and really gotten into and cared about. Oh, okay, there, there was. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say. I was gonna ask. Did you enjoy it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Loved it. Like awesome. one of the best works of. Uh, art depicting like depression and huh, being a sad weirdo I've ever seen. It's and, great. And how weird um, it would be to work at your dad's job. Yeah, oh, it's just great. It's just a mess. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I mean, it's like it's what I want. Everybody's just a mess. Yeah, they really are. And they're all a mess in different ways. And I love that. That's what I That's what I want to see. Um, it's not the only thing I want to see, but like in something like that where like it's dealing with these emotions and dress yeah i want everyone to be a mess um i think that's a good fair. show but were there like were there mecha shows on like toonami when we were when we were younger oh yeah i feel like i had to have seen some there there was not gundam, paying much attention there was gundam on toonami there, oh there was there was gundam wing and g and then g gundam later um, and then I think they started putting up some of the, like, other stuff after that, but they definitely put- I think Gundam Wing was the first one they ever picked. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah. Which I don't love because- but, like, I- I, I respect the hell out of it, because it's just, like, aesthetic as hell. It's just, like, these very, like, um, like, slim guy- like, intense guys- uh, being very intense all the time, um, and very in their feelings about things. Um, but I also like it when, like, Gundam is, um, saying things like, actually, this is all incredibly traumatic and terrible. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing that really worked, that made Evangelion very easy for me to watch, um, is that the mechs are also fucked up. Yeah. And, like, the animation's really, like, disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of body horror elements to the art style yes. um, in the big yeah. robot fights. And the mon- and then the monsters that they fight themselves, which are... They're not called monsters. I forgot what they're called. Angels. But they're angels, right? And there's just... They're so weird looking and gnarly. And, like, that's really appealing to me. And that, that I find much more engaging than, like, a cool looking big robot fighting another cool looking big robot in space. Right. And- that I find very difficult to focus on. Um, because actually, like, uh, Zeta, the character stuff, I, I was vibing with, but, like, the robot fights themselves, I was just, I found mind-numbingly boring. That's fair. Even though I think they're, the, the, the mechs are actually cool looking, it's just, the actual fights, I was just like, there's... And that's also, like, early animation, like, some of the animation back then just wasn't as interesting to look at, you know? In general, though, I find I liked the animation style and I liked the art style. It's just the, the, yeah, I guess they're they're. It was just not the most. Di- the actual fights were lacking in a lot of like the kind of dynamic thing that I would need for a fight to hold my attention. I see some people in chat pointing out some things, and there's actually one. Uh, tr- <clears throat> as soon as you mentioned Evangelion and like what you liked about it, and like being fucked up and. Um, like body body horror e, one of mm-hmm. my favorite Gundam series is one of the newest ones um, called Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, oh, cool! That which is really frenetic and fast and like really good in that way. Like yeah, like the fights are way more interesting. I I find just by virtue of like being like more dynamic kind of battles. Um, one thing about the Iron Blooded Orphans universe is that like they 
basically solve laser guns. Like they're like, well, laser guns are worthless in this universe because we figured out like this, like a blade of plating that we can put on all of our mechs so that lasers are worthless. So everybody has to use like swords and spears and hammers and big scissors that they oh, like cool. chop the mechs up into. Um, yeah, I like that. I, that's a, I'm into that. It's really good. I really love that. There's a Gundam called Gusion that uses the big scissors that I love. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is getting um, I'm probably just a little bit worked up from uh, so much talking, but yeah, you've been you've been doing a lot of it. Uh, you're doing great. Thank you. I think I also think that I've just been so spoiled when it comes to animation style because I don't watch a ton, ton, ton of anime. Mm. Um, that like with the action stuff I've watched most recently has been like One Punch Man and yeah. stuff. Where like and or. And I'm also thinking, like, you know, like, what are the animes that, like, are really sticking sticking with me that I've watched recently? So, I'm like, that and, like, Mob Psycho and, uh, like, Double Man Cry Baby. Sure. And, like, all this stuff is, like, very, very, very dynamic animation. <laughs> like, in, uh, they are re- they are setting out to animate the fuck out of a thing, right? Yeah. Like, Science uh, Saru. <laughs> yeah, so it's, like, I... I see stuff where I'm not, like, just, like, overjoyed by you know, the way someone's hair moves, and I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll watch this later. This is Nick right. <laughs> You know? Um, oh, I killed no. myself. Oops. Oh, no! <laughs> well, that's fine. I'll get back to it. <laughs> uh, I think you will, I think you would like um, Iron-Blooded Orphans a lot. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. Um, there's some really cool stuff in there about, like, the way that it's, it's, it's about child soldiers i guess basically like who are basically indentured into um servitude to like this shitty uh private military company uh who end up like you know spoilers for like the first episode they end up like kind of creating their own group and like trying to chart their own destiny and fight back against this like oppressive um go- world government that like condones slavery and stuff um, and there's a lot of weird body stuff in it by virtue of the fact that, like, in order to fly the mechs really good, they have to, like, plug their spines into the robots to speak directly to the mechs. Cool. Sorry. Somebody in the chat said, have you seen Thunderbolt Fantasy? So I googled Thunderbolt Ooh. Fantasy. This is the coolest shit I've ever looked at. LB. I am gonna watch the fuck out of Thunderbolt Fantasy. This looks sick. LB, Thunderbolt Fan- You- Yes. Oh my fucking god. I didn't even think of that. You will love Thunderbolt Fantasy. <laughs> the face of- It's a cop- <laughs> Nitro Plus and Good Smile Company and Tyrone's Puppet Production Company. I'm- <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta watch this right. This looks sick. Yeah, I'm sorry, LB. If you oh, need to, if you need to go, everything should be puppets. Like, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's it's. I love Thunderbolt Fantasy. It's really good. The face I'm making right now, like I'm doing an actual colon a capital D face. That's my face right now. It's so good. It's like, it's some of the most impressive like puppet work I've basically ever seen in my life. And it's also, like, extremely fashion. It's, like, super high drama. Everybody looks, like, so good. Everybody, all the stuff everybody's wearing is so good. The twists are fashion really good. Fashion puppets. Historical fantasy uh, fashion puppets. Mm-hmm. With, like, a very heavy Chinese fantasy influence on a lot of it. Which I I love. Yep. Oh, I'm so, I'm, 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 I'm in. I'm in. Uh, it's on, last time I checked it was on Crunchyroll. I don't know if it still is, but it, last time I looked it was. I don't know if you have Crunchyroll, but... For some reason, I'm like, I have, I have all these weird Chinese streaming apps that I don't have Crunchyroll. <laughs> and I'm like, no, Crunchyroll got it in the United States. Uh, um, I'm like, why can't it be on Billy Billy? <laughs> um, it might be. I don't know. I, it is, but it's only in mainland China. Oh, damn. Okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, God, I, I watch it. I gotta check if they're making another season of that because there's. I've seen the first two seasons. I don't know if there's any more. Oh. Music is really good. Mmm, LB. Oh my God, I didn't know I'm you didn't so know. I'm so psyched. I'm so psyched. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? If, if I knew about this, this is the only thing I'm talking about. <laughs> you'd be, you're gonna have to be begging me. Like everyone in the chat is gonna be regretting this in like two weeks. So really, I wish we hadn't told them. <laughs> so insufferable. Oh my god, yeah, oh, this, this is, is all, so like, sick. this is the 
preview of uh, next week's uh, West Coast Friends reunion, everybody. <laughs> it's just LB talking about the Well, no, Coast. no. The, we've got the big debate on Monday. Oh, that's right. You do. Me and Nikki are going to do the big debate if you... Uh, Taylor got a taste of it on Twitter, but yeah, it's a, <laughs> be a serious episode <laughs> about whether or not dogs can live moss. <laughs> oh my god, I got killed way faster that time. I'll give this one more shot at the very least. I don't want to keep everybody here all night. Season one is such a beautiful, well, self-contained story, says uh, Nagabanaga. I'm literally just looking at these pictures of these puppets. The puppets are so good, and they move so well. Mm. There's like some good behind-the-scenes stuff about how they accomplish a lot of that stuff, too. Great. And like Nitro Plus, I need to also like get into their, more into their catalog. Mm, yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you, chat. The best. I love this chat also. Like, what the chat. I, I love, I do love couching on streams just because it's fun to like see these games and chat. But also, like, I love the chat. We've got such a good, a good group of folks. Hell yeah. So nice. <sighs> Thanks, chat. Honestly, thank you for, thank you, for being so Big good with shout us. Shout out. <laughs> Okay, I cannot look at these puppets anymore because I will just look at these puppets in silence going, oh, cool. Well, that's the thing. You, you, need to, you need to save it. You need to watch the show so when you see the puppets in motion and you, for the first time, you're like, holy shit, that's a cool puppet. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, mm, yeah. I, mm. I almost spoiled something from Thunderbolt Fantasy being like, oh, remember that time? And then I realized, no, you no. don't remember that time. I don't. Uh, but the Thunderbolt Fantasy makes me think of um, Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt, which is another really good, uh, very short uh, Mobile Suit Gundam series that you could watch. That's like it was like a series of web episodes at first, so it's like the whole thing is like this length of a movie. If you watch it all together, oh cool! And you might that's, like that. That's always nice. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna focus on these very cool puppets. The very the cool next, puppets, yeah. However long, um, and then I will open my mind to new possibilities. That's fair. But, yeah, I have a thing where I'm like, I got, I'm like, a, I'm, I'm a true like, all those, you know, relatable ADHD memes of like, oh, time for my next hyper focus, and like, you know, that's me, that's me, that's real, uh, that's me, that's my life. <laughs> I just, I find a thing, I'm like, okay, this is it for me. This is my life now. For I think that's why I got super. Why I, like I would get really, really into books uh, Ooh, when I was yeah. a kid. Uh -huh. and so I would just be like, okay, I'm gonna forget I exist for a few hours. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> this is a normal coping strategy. I mean, hey, like you know, it's it's fun to be like super focused on a certain thing for a long time. It is, yeah. <sighs> Which reminds me, I have I think I have given up on uh, on Dark Souls. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it okay. just got too hard. You still had, like, a good time with it while you were playing it, right? I did. So that's I all did, that matters. Hey, yeah. I've got some songs in some of my playlists that, like, I can't listen to now without thinking about killing skeletons. So. <laughs> that's good. I love that. <laughs> Which is weird, because there's some weird ones. It's like, oh. uh, Mamamoo Dick Halkomani is, like, a sexy, like, kind of jazzy R&B K-pop song. And I just I hear it, and I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I gotta kill some skeletons. I gotta kill some poison rats. Uh, I gotta sneak around. I thought for a minute that you meant that there were some weird skeletons. I was like, yeah, there are. I guess. Yeah, you're right. There's like the bone wheel. <laughs> no, there are some. There are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's very true. Uh. I feel like this went so much better in the first <clears throat> run, and now I'm having so much more trouble. Did you just set up like a big bomb? Yeah, I like shot like a big exploding magic grenade. Cool. It worked out. It did like a lot of damage. Ooh, so did that. Holy shit. I'll take it. Okay. Can I heal Mavis real quick? Yeah, get that free health. I'm gonna heal Mavis. Mavis deserves it. Deserves that free health. Mavis does deserve it. 56 or 45. I guess I might as well do that. Shoot a magic missile. Oh, well, they missed. <laughs> okay. Can she shoot? Yes. 
Oh, plot into site blocked. Oh, yeah, the associating different kinds of media that you consume together that make no sense together is, a, like, uh, The Sims and Xena for me. Oh. Like, I, I watched all of Xena while playing The Sims once, and now I, like, can't see Xena without being like, ah, oh, gotta, like, see what my Sims are up to. <laughs> gotta, gotta, like, remodel this house. Is that just a thing that um, you get a lot? I mean, I mean, that's how our brains kind of work, right? Is you, uh, you just kind of, if you consume a lot of some, if you do a lot of anything in tandem, you'll just kind of associate them with each other. That's very true. Because you're training your brain to do it. I'm trying to think of like what a good weird example with me or for me that is. Mm, that's a weird way to phrase that, but I think you know what well, I mean. But if you do, if you do like. It sounds like you combine things a lot. Mm. Like you, you talk, they'll talk about like listening to podcasts while playing a game, oh, or like watching yeah. while playing something. And I, I don't really. That's not. Uh, I don't do it a ton, so it like sticks in my mind more. Sure. When I do it. Okay. Or if I do it, it'll be like this thing plus this thing, and this is the combination. And I don't vary from that combination. So it'll be like The Sims and Xena together, but not The Sims and like any other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Huh. And that, like, like I had my Dark Souls playlist, which made no sense as a Dark Souls playlist. It was not originally a Dark Souls playlist, but <laughs> oh, like, no. now I can't listen to it without one. Play- <laughs> it was <laughs> co-opted by Lordran. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is Gwyn's playlist now. <laughs> yeah, Blackjack Attack says whenever they get sick now, they want to play Pokemon. Oh, which, sure. Like, yeah. Oh, this, like, I had, I had my sick shows for sure. Yeah. And I didn't game enough as a kid to, like, have my sick games i so the, that's actually one thing i i don't know if it's a, it's not a good uh association but one thing i always associate um is with another thing is um mcdonald's happy meal toy plastic makes me feel sick like looking at it and like feeling it makes me feel sick because i probably got sick one time and like you know after eating mcdonald's or something like that and so like i can't get really? over that See, for me, it's like the opposite where I feel like comforted from sickness because I could only have get a McDonald's Happy Meal if I was sick. Oh, interesting. It was, like my, it's, it was called the sick. It was the sick treat. Huh, that makes sense, though. You got you got one sick treat. I got, and it could be anything, but I always chose a Happy Meal. <laughs> was it while you were still sick or like after you were done being sick? No, it was while I was sick. It's like, okay, being sick sucks. So you get one sick treat. What's your sick treat going to be? It wasn't. And they're like a danger. Every time it was. Every time it was a happy meal. <laughs> Wasn't there like a danger of like making you like uh, nauseous or anything though? Like filling up your stomach? I was, I was, I always had a cold. Oh, okay. Okay. That I makes was, more sense. Yeah. Or like the chicken pox or something. Oh, I mean, I guess, I guess that it probably wasn't, it probably wasn't available as a sick treat if I had a stomach problem. Right. Like. Like I, I would see that making sense if like afterwards you were like, okay, tomorrow we're going to get you McDonald's. Yeah. So I wasn't sure. Let's see if I can throw a ball at these guys this time. That, I mean, that would make more sense because my taste buds would be back to work. But now I think it was Ooh. also a matter of like my uh, my mom only being able to, being able to take a certain amount of time off work. Oh, um, sure. That makes sense. My mom definitely had like very strict work schedules when we were very young. I, like opened up later on when she got a different job, but we were in very much the same situation. Yeah. Um, I'll be when they get sick. McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. <laughs> I haven't had McDonald's in so long. It's been like a year. It's been almost a year since I last had McDonald's. I, I didn't have. I haven't since before the. Uh, um, the bad times, the cool zone. Yeah. No, I remember the last time I got it. I got a chicken sandwich from <laughs> McDonald's across the street from my dentist, and half my mouth was numb. And they were like, don't eat until. You're, you got feeling back in your mouth because it could be very dangerous. Yeah! So I, like, I promise I won't. And I went, <laughs> I got Mc- you got McDonald's! <laughs> but I was like, I can, uh, life hack? I'm just gonna eat with one half of my mouth. But I was so oh, freaked out course. the whole time. I was like, I'm gonna bite my face off. And this was so stupid. But I did it. Oh. I just ate very slowly and carefully using one half of my mouth. Well, I'm glad you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> Me too. Oh, boy. <sighs> I get it, though. Like, I get it when you're, like, after something like that, you're already out, 
and about. You you don't have to like order right it there. or yeah or go anywhere special. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. God. I get it. I get it. Burger King's pocket bike racer and neutral milk hotels in the airplane over the sea. That's a wild combo. <laughs> I love that though. That's really good. Uh... Oh no! Why do you have a grenade? Fuck you! Dude, he was the last one. Okay, hell yeah! Robbie has agreed. Has like, he has agreed that our, this is our new show. I just sent a picture and said, found our new show, all caps, PUPPETS! He's <laughs> awesome, yes. I love it. Uh, okay, I did. I saved before that, that big battle there, so... Before the kaiju big battle. Never gone to kaiju big battle. Me neither. I, um, they used to broadcast um, some of the fights on G4 TV at like 5 in the morning. <laughs> and I would yeah. watch it before school sometimes. That's the only way I know Kaiju Big Battle. And then they would intercut it with, like, episodes of classic G.I. Joe and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think I was supposed to go uh, WrestleMania week bef last year before it was all canceled. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I think I got it. Oh, that sucks. That's cool. I didn't really want to go to Tampa anyways. Oh, fair. Okay. Can you imagine, like, your one trip, like, your one spring trip? You're like, I guess I'm going to go to Tampa. I guess so, yeah. I don't really take a lot of trips, but I get what you mean. Yeah. Especially if it's like... I, I take trips and they're mostly to like visit friends and family and stuff. Oh, sure, yeah. That makes sense. I think one of the things here is I never moved uh, away, so like most of my friends who um, live in this area or like that I've known for a long time um, live here or I don't speak to them really anymore. Yeah. Um, or are people who now I just work with every day? Like, are most of my actual, like, ongoing friends? Like you, Elby. Hi. I, I mean, it's just a weird thing that all of my friends, like, not my old, old friends, but a lot of my friends, like, ended up in Seattle. So it's very easy for me to just fly up there and see all of them and then go see my parents. Oh, sure, yeah. You do it all in one fell swoop. Last time I actually went with my parents to this pie place and bought all these pies and I brought the pies over to my friend's house who were letting me stay with them and that was very popular because I brought them pies. <laughs> I bet! I bet that would make you popular. Yeah, it was great. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I like pie. I feel like parents, like, I don't know. I think that's probably not true that parents know where all the best pie spots are but it feels like it's true. Mm, it should be true. You know? Like, I feel like that's something parents <laughs> should know about. Yeah. Like, if you're a parent, you need to know where the good pie spots are. Right, that's, that's your, your responsibility. Job. Mm hmm I'm glad we're on the same page about this. <laughs> Me too, Steven. <laughs> uh, can I shoot this guy? Please let... Please. Please let Steven and Mavis shoot. I just want to beat these guys. I don't... I feel like... If I if I end the stream on, like, just six repeated failures... Uh, this is some cost fallacy, isn't it? <laughs> that it that, that, that's not right. I should I should keep playing until I just beat this guy. That guy's beaten. Oh, that's the motherfucker that had the grenade last time. I should take them out. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> this is actually kind of making me want to play Fire Emblem again. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Did you ever beat it? Uh, I mean, I beat the... Uh, the. I've only played the like one Fire Emblem. Oh, which one? But I did beat it. It was the one from the recent one, Three Houses. Three Houses, okay. I beat it a lot of times. I beat it... Uh -huh. To get all the rap. I got all the I got all the endings, I think. Really? Okay. Yeah. Did you play the DLC? Uh I, yes, but I didn't and I beat the DLC, but I didn't finish the playthrough I started with the DLC, which does open up different options, but it doesn't open up like any major other story endings, I don't think, so oh. I didn't play it there. I didn't know that. But you know, it gives you different romance options. Um I see. For the ending. Hey, we but did I didn't. It. Uh, yeah. Up. I got an Ares flight recorder optional. Find the pay data the runners are after. Okay. Might do that real quick. Find this date. I guess they're after some stuff here. Some data. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Elby. No, it's fine. I'm I'm watching. Uh, I have some friends who are like super super into the fire the Fire Emblems, and 
you know, when I got into it, we were talking and they were like, oh, here's this website that has all the real, you know, damage rates. And it's just like, or something. It was just this website that was just full of numbers. <laughs> just like <laughs> spreadsheet upon spreadsheet upon spreadsheet of like, here's this weapon. Here are all the different numbers this weapon can do. And I'm like, ah, uh, for every different Fire Emblem game ever, every different weapon, every different class, uh. every freaking like, yeah, it broke my brain. It's not like that's. I could never get in that deep to anything. I was just about to say that's that wasn't what you were there for. Well, no, it's fine. Like I'm, I'm happy that other people can enjoy it to that level, and I, I have great respect for, like, being a, a Fire Emblem spreadsheet person. No, no, that's but, what I mean though. Is like it, that's yeah. You were there for for something else <laughs> than what those people were there for. <laughs> What's up? What's up, okay, Melvin? well, my friend Addie, Bland Gravy, <laughs> said, okay, sorry to rat you out, but you did make a spreadsheet for all the supports in Fire Emblem <laughs> Three Houses, and I did, and it was color-coded. <laughs> I can. That's why I can say I have great respect and love for the people who do number spreadsheets. <laughs> As a fellow spreadsheet freak, I wasn't, I didn't mean to imply that I am not a spreadsheet weirdo, because I am. No, and LB. I'm very proud of that spreadsheet. It was a good spreadsheet. This was just a lie of omission, LB. <laughs> it was. Um. I also forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I yeah. love that, though. You know what? That's awesome. Um, I love I, a spreadsheet. I didn't get all of the uh, S rank romances and stuff like that in that because I didn't realize that you had to have certain characters like each other enough before the time skip in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Otherwise, they were just yeah. permanently locked out of it. So I missed a couple of those. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that if I'm detracting from this serious game moment with spreadsheets. No. I don't know. I'm talking to a ghost kid. I don't know. <laughs> But that's like a ghost kid. That's serious business. Did this kid die in the plane crash? I guess it must have. Kept to bear witness, but fled in terror. Malevolent spirit profaned the man's remains. This spirit was other. It was not this pl of this place. It had twisted its way through the veil and through the dark to come here. Uh, I think this is actually just like a random ghost that like she's using because it's like useful. It's like here to help. Okay, helpful ghost. Yeah, I don't think it's like specifically related to this area. Uh, when the other had gone, we returned to our vigil. We found two creatures of flesh, once one you would call an elf, unsullied by technology and able to channel the energies of the cosmos, yet his spirit was corrupted from within. He was dark and twisted, yet not like the other, so we did not flee. There was a troll. Ribbons of essence, leading cold machinery. So that's a cyborg troll and a magical elf is who we're looking for, I think. Okay. Uh, this, I Cyborg honestly... Troll, that's very strong. Yeah. That's a, that's a very strong combination. It's kind of what I am. I've got cyborg parts. Oh, shit. Um, I'm sorry to erase you, Mavis Beacon, cyborg troll. No, that's fine. We were talking about, like, Sandman, I think, when I was getting my cyborg... It's <laughs> true, yeah. <laughs> I, it's actually something I don't love, and I'm not the this is, I'm not the first person to say this, is something I don't love about um, the uh, Shadowrun lore, is that, like, if you get, the more cybernetics you get, the less good you are at magic, because you're less human, and you're, like, less connected to the world, and I don't think that's cool. I think it, I don't think saying people who have to use prostheses are less human, or have less humanness to them, that's kind of a Yeah, there's a, that's a, I know sometimes you have to, you want to, like, you know, have in-universe explanations for uh, your game mechanics, yeah. but you gotta, yeah, you, you gotta. You, that one should have gone back to the uh, the drawing board. They should have uh, taken that back and worked. Work something, something else. else. There's something that. else you can say. Um, yeah, and or maybe even like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna problem solve for them because it's not my job. No, yeah, but yeah, I, I've already thought of like multiple solutions for that. <laughs> that <I'm gonna laughs> instead, so sorry. <laughs> But this is like, like you could literally no, I am gonna problem solve. You could literally do two classes of cybernetics, um, where that use uh, like different elements and different properties. So one could like be more for spiritual routes oh, and magical yeah. routes, but you could have like the other one use you know some like imaginary metal or whatever that like is magic kryptonite. So right. I literally just thought of that. I'd never, I like, didn't know what this was a few hours ago. So Shadowrun, do, 
get better. Yeah, I don't know if they get better about that later on in these particular games, because actually this developer, Hair Rain Schemes, is really... They're working with stuff that was, like, written by a bunch of, like, tabletop RPG nerds in the, like, early 80s, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, a lot of these, like, things are taken from a very different time and place culturally. And they actually, I think, they do this with Battletech, too, which is also, like, an 80s property. Um, where they are, like, really good about, um, redefining and reimagining, like, that for, like, a modern context and, like, making it less, like, shitty <laughs> and, like, uh, in some cases, yeah. like, culturally insensitive. Um, I mean, Battletech, the new one, is, I think, the first game I ever played where you can just, like, pick an NB character. Like, you create your character That's at cool. the beginning. Yeah. Um, so you can play that entire game as just, like, a they-them person, and there's just, like, random they-them people in the pool. There's, like, a lot- that game is, like, full of- the Battletech universe is, like, full of, like, this is Space China, or whatever. This is, like, China in 10 million years, or whatever. Um, and- but they do a good job of, like, stripping out a lot of the, like- and they're, like, weird, honorable, crafty spy people, and, like, turning yeah. that into something, like, more, like, good. <laughs> cool. And I also, I do love the ability to play, like, a non-binary character. Yeah. And also not be in the CI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just kind of like, 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 okay, you can be non-binary, but you are working for Ronald Reagan. You're working for Ronald fucking <laughs> no! Reagan. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, hey, Battletech beat him there. Battletech was 2018. That game came out, so. Oh, yeah. Well uh, done. Thank you. And in that one, you're like a, you're like a bunch of weird um, space, like... Just scraping by, like, super scrappy little, um, sort of fix-it company that just goes and, like, does jobs for people in mechs. It's, oh. it's good. I, I've been thinking, actually, I almost streamed Battletech tonight because I've been playing so much of it instead of this game. <laughs> and just rolled a character called Mavis Beacon in that one, but, but I decided I should probably finish this one out. <sighs> but I do love Battletech. That's, like, where Mech Warrior comes from. I don't know if you know Mech Warrior. The thing is, these are all just words that I see constantly <laughs> all the time. Right. So I'm like, maybe I do. Maybe I've just seen the words <laughs> mech and warrior in close proximity many times in life. That's fair. That's very fair. Uh... Oh, Addy says in Battletech, you're working for a displaced monarch. Much better. Okay. I do feel that working for a fictional bad guy is better than working for real life. Real life. It's better Ronald than Dragon. fictionally working for real life bad guy. Yeah. That is my, uh, before we get in, like, we should, st I don't want to go down this road because I will get that. Then you get into the, is Edelgard a war criminal? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is don't no. Don't be sorry. It's a, it's a good, it's a good gag. Uh, but no, yeah, the, like totally. Um, the Urano restoration in Battletech is like not, uh, it, they're, they pay you a lot of money, like but you can also just completely ignore their missions if you want to. And there's also like no really good people to work for in the Battletech universe. Yeah. Uh, they're all kind of weird monarchs. It's also the result of, like, the time period. The Battletech universe takes place over, like, a long chunk of time. Um, and they chose to do it relatively early in what we generally consider, like, the Battletech fiction. Um, so there's not, like, a lot of options in terms of, like, what factions there are. It's like, it's here's a bunch of, like, Got it. shitty, like, the neoliberal republic. It's like the... Um, it's the Star Wars thing, right? Of, like, those movies, the, the prequels at the very least, are, like, very much George Lucas, like, working out his political feelings, but he's just kind of really bad at saying what those are out loud. And so, it, yeah. like, he drops, like, a ton of text in the beginning of the movie that explains all of the important stuff, and then it's like, okay, and now let's go underwater. Um, and so you kind I of miss a lot all, of that. I just rewatched all the, the prequels, actually, and, like, actually did, it was like, okay, I'm gonna read all this text in the beginning and try <laughs> to figure out what's going on with that, that trade federation. Uh-huh. And their cool hats. They do have cool hats. I like, they do the, have they have great hats in the Trade Federation. Cool spaceships too. I always loved the yeah. like, Luker Hulks. No, I was like, I was really vibing with the prequels this time around. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever watch Clone Wars? I didn't. No, but uh, I got kind of curious about it because there's like that new podcast about it, right? Yeah. That some folks we I. One person I know, at least, is doing it. Yeah, um, a more civilized. But I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, this is why I didn't watch it because it, it's weird looking. I don't like the way they look." They talk about that on that podcast, actually. They, oh, do they? Yeah, they. Um, yeah. Apparently, George Lucas like told them this can't look like Pixar or DreamWorks, and it can't look like Beowulf, which was like the other big CG thing at the time. So they had to find a yeah. different art style that didn't look like any of those it things. It looks 
It looks like um, Fortnite to me. Yeah, a little bit. So I don't like it. I would and that's also I don't like also don't like Fortnite because it looks like Clone Wars. I would actually say Fortnite looks more DreamWorksy than Clone Wars does, in okay. my opinion. Because Clone Wars, everything feels like it's very angular and made out of like sort of vinyl material or something like that. Um, if it looks like Skylanders to me, it looks like um, Disney Infinity figures, or maybe Disney Infinity figures look like <laughs> Clone Wars. I don't know. Uh, looks whereas like toys from Burger King, I would like a more like toys from Burger King like texture and like I want to be able to I want the visceral toys from Burger King smell I want the grease mm. you know, I want the smell mm -hmm. I want all of that the whole I could experience. watch a show that has that's like able to convey the kind of greasy weird smell Burger King toy that's I want fair. it to be a little grosser I mean, honestly, Which is usually my usually my criticism of most <laughs> animated things. Like, why is this more disgusting? <laughs> why does this not like revolt me immediately? Yeah, like mecha anime is interesting, but why isn't it grosser? Hey, yeah. you know, there's a couple in uh, there. What's my favorite Fortnite? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? It's definitely not the Keanu Reeves Fortnite. That looks terrible. Oh, the I don't even. They know. They did does him so dirty. It's not well, really no, him. They did like. No, they did like a, a John Wick Fortnite. But the, but he's like a he's like a knockoff. I don't think it's really John Wick. Oh, is it? Everybody okay, calls him John Wick because it's clear that that's what they're doing. I thought it was like an official tie-in. I don't I think, think so. I think I don't like any of them. I Even... don't agree. Yeah. I don't like this. That's how I know I'm old. Is I look at this and I don't want it near me. I actually think like when Fortnite first launched, it was maybe a little bit more interesting with some of that stuff. There was one of the early criticisms that I feel like just kind of went by the wayside early on with Fortnite was like when that game first launched, it was like this PVE base building cooperative thing for a lot of people. And so you had multiple different player characters and like all those player characters had like different body types and they were actually like really good about like having different characters that looked different um but then yeah. when they made it a competitive game everybody has to be like the same slim body type kind of character right. because of the hitboxes that makes sense it's just yeah eh, kind that's of annoying bummer. also blackjack attack did just get me <laughs> okay. uh, as they say uh because they asked what my favorite Fortnite is but they spelled it fort n-i-g-h-t <laughs> uh uh, which I which I missed, and then so there's just the twelve day of Christmas, give or take a couple. Very good, y you got me. That's I've fair. been gotten. No, it's not a very stupid joke. It's very good, and you did actually get me. It's yeah, it's very like. How is it both a game with random characters and basically Funko Pops? Hmm. Again, it's just so smooth and not gross. Yeah, make it grosser. It's so, really so I guess smooth in Clone Wars soft. defense. The angle, like the angles of Clone Wars, make it slightly more gross. Yeah. But yeah, no, it is. It like Fortnite feels very Funko Pop to me. I don't like Funko Pops. I, I do like little figures, and the figures I like are Nendoroids. Oh yeah, Nendoroids are just so, like good. Are Funko Pops, but good is the thing. Yeah. So I would. Uh, I'd like someone to get called out, being like, "Uh, you know, not that anyone knows that I have Nendoroids." But no, nobody. What if someone does? What if that? someone who's like sne sneaky spying on me is looking in through my window and being mm. like, "I see your Nendoroids. I see your little figures that watch over you all the time." Uh, Dota used to do these figures that I really liked a lot that were like um, unique to Dota, and you would buy them at like the international and like different tournaments that they did, and they would come with codes that you could redeem for skins and special stuff in game. Um, those were called Demi Heroes, and they stopped doing them because they made a partnership with Dem uh, with um, Nendoroid eventually. So they just started making Dota Nendoroids. But I really missed the the Demi Heroes because I thought they had a really cool look to them. That was that was that's my uh, thing to add to this conversation <laughs> about little plastic figures. It's cool. I like. I wish I didn't like little plastic figures, but I do in fact like little plastic figures of my favorite guys. That's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Like ethically or morally i just i don't want to keep acquiring things that's true that's fair um i would i much much rather prefer to get rid of some of the garbage that i have sitting around that doesn't do anything than to yeah. get more just yeah i don't know i'm just dreading the next time i move and i'm having to pack everything up again like, yeah ah! 
So I've been looking for a house recently myself, and um, the idea of having to move some of the stuff out of here, I'm just going to get rid of some of the stuff I own. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there are literally Funko Pops for Fortnite. Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, that's that doesn't make any sense because there are no like yeah like animator says there are no characters. No, I mean they have characters, but who cares? I want to I want to fuck up of my favorite character, pink hair Fortnite. Pink hair Fortnite, and then it that's it. And so I can gaze at it and look in its dead little eyes and remember mm. when it did the funny dance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it flossed. When it flossed. Uh, oh, there was this. Thing for a while in like indie wrestling where everyone was flossing okay <laughs> yeah where you go to a show and like someone would come out and floss and I didn't that's how actually how I found out about flossing uh, oh <laughs> like, really like, wrestlers would floss sometimes to show that they're like fun okay you know? or uh, I, I was gonna say hip. is that a thing that they actually did to be hip and fun or was that like Vince McMahon being like you gotta no, get out there and wrestling. floss oh, no he, yeah, Vince McMahon has no idea what flossing is oh okay <laughs> <laughs> um, so like Marco Stunt was really into flossing, and this other guy Bandito did a lot of flossing. Very two very small men. Okay. Um, ne neither of them would ever get hired by Vince McMahon because they're both very tiny. small. Yeah, um, very very small guys. But yeah, that's how I, I found out about it. And then I found out it was a Fortnite dance. Well, like, oh, no. <laughs> it is in Fortnite. Fortnite did not invent flossing. Okay, sorry. I know they didn't invent flossing. Oh, but okay. It was popularized probably to some people by Fortnite. Gotcha. Sorry. I didn't mean to I didn't mean no, to. No, um, you're right cuz I you. did say it I did make it sound like I thought it was invented by Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite didn't invent any of the Fortnite dances, right? No, They're they all... just stole it from a bunch of black people <laughs> and yeah. uh, and then uh, sold money for it or or yeah. uh, sold them for money. And then made them deeply uncool. Yeah. To me, an old white person yeah. <laughs> probably isn't the arbiter of coolness, but <laughs> <sighs> I do like this guy. I like Johnny Clean. There's da there's David yeah. Fry the second here, and then right next to him is Johnny Clean. He's I think they're pretty cool. Johnny Clean's a great name. Yeah. This is him right here. Apparently, he's like some ex badass, like super soldier kind of guy. Um, and he um, works as a janitor now because he knows that nobody um, looks at a janitor funny. Like, you put on a janitor suit, you can go anywhere kind of situation. So okay. he just, like, dresses up like this so no people will leave him alone because he's done with that shit. <laughs> That's, like, really the dream is to find the outfit. Mm. Like, the exact outfit that will get people to leave you alone. Yeah. That's my dream, at least. But I also want to like, look good, have honestly. Honestly, yeah, I do, do want to look good. I want to look good, but I also want to be left alone. Yeah. Like for a while, I had really brightly colored hair, mm -hmm. and it, people always want to talk to you about that. Oh yeah. Like even in a big city, I thought you know I live in LA. Nobody's gonna want to talk to me about my blue hair. It's not a big deal. People want to talk to me about it. Yeah. I um paint my nails, and uh, I haven't done it much recently because I'm just not going out enough where people will see it, and so I don't care as much. But I get comments on it constantly. Yeah. Usually positive comments, like it's people like just complimenting me and stuff like that. But it is, it it does get a little bit just kind of weird to just have like complete strangers constantly talking to you about something. Yeah. See, I also popped a message in our Discord call. Oh, okay. If you want to take a look at that in a second? Sorry. No, no problem. Uh, I think we're basically ready to wrap up here anyway because we just finished a shadow okay. run. We we got a bunch of story stuff. I think we're about to hit the next major event, so I don't want to go too much deeper. We've been going for a while too, so yeah. I'm getting a little a little tired, and I actually have a uh, a FaceTime call with an old friend that I forgot I had scheduled for well, this evening. Perfect timing then. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us in chat and talking to us about beans and Sandman and other things. Uh, beans and Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the two major topics of any Fanbyte production here at Fanbyte.com. Um, we'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, Merit's going to be back one more time here for another Tekken run before we switch over to Merit Souls and do the uh, Dark Souls 2 stream over there. Um, I'll be back with uh, more Mavis Beacon Teaches Tactics on uh, 
next Thursday, I guess. Um, in the meantime, everybody, have a good night. Um, I don't know anybody to raid, and I don't really know how to raid very well, so I'm not going to probably do it. I don't know if there's anybody streaming right now. Sorry. Um, but everybody, please have a good night. Uh, be safe, and uh, we'll be back again soon. Bye!